Okay, so far all of these are coming out to be pretty equal, although I really do like the QSI the best. I'm going to do the AEO next, and I'm going to do the Sandisk. But let me know if there's something else here that's come up that's new. <clears throat> Just plop it in the room and I'll see it. Okay. There's a bunch of stuff today that's pretty good. NQ. Yeah. I looked at all those so far, Tom, and I don't like any of them except I didn't look at this one. Nah, I'll put it on a secondary watch list. I don't like Baidu. I'm not crazy about Sohu. I don't like Sina, really. This is going to work. This is going to work, but it's going to be sloppy. It's going to work, but it's going to be sloppy. This is only going to work if the market comes in today. Uh, Sohu. Even though I think the market's coming in, my bias for the day in the market is bearish, bearish slash neutral. I don't think we're flying off a planet. So some of these things, this looks like it's gapping down with the market. Now, I don't know if there's a reason for this or not, but you see how this looks very similar to this type of situation here? I'm not all hyped up about this here. I want something that I feel like is going to fall off a planet. No chance of recovery. On its own, independently of the market. And even SanDisk, I mean, PCP, all right. $5 spread? <laughs> Tom. This isn't a big enough target for a $5 spread. And it's not going to have a $5 spread in the open, but it is going to have a huge spread. It's probably going to have an $0.80 cent spread, I'm guessing, or something. I don't know. I've never traded this before. Target isn't big enough here. It's hard to believe at this price point. But look, the target's with 4 bucks. And it also already got there. So keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to rate this AEO, although I think I'm doing the QSII. Let me rate the AEO and the SanDisk, get those numbers, and then we're going to go over the all the resistance and targets for everything, which we have to do yet here. I went off on a tangent about Netflix earlier, and we'll talk about it again if we have time, but Netflix is actually the best gap today of any of the gaps. But be careful of those of you that like to go long. I think the market's coming in today. Nothing crazy, but something small. Small pull in the market today. Let me just rate two last things here, and then we're going to figure everything out that we're doing. I'll be right back.
Okay, here's the story on the SanDisk. Uh, SanDisk only gets 19 points. I, I think it's going to work though. Remember, 19 is a 50-50 chance of working or failing. Uh, I, I think SanDisk might work, even though it's right on the cusp. But you just have to be careful with it because it doesn't rate over 20 or 20 or more. Uh, AEO is pretty good. It rates 20. Isn't that weird? It's unusual. Let me just look here. QSII, ZHNE, and AEO are all the same. What does that tell me? HRC down. Not enough volume. Sure, it's down, but I don't know where it is. Lena, let's talk about questions later. Can we do this later? We can't talk about any of those things right now until after we're done trading. We only got 30 minutes here to get situated. I will scroll back and remember if you want to stick around um, later, okay? Okie doke. I don't want to go off on a answering questions here now. We're trying to get ready to trade. Uh, this doesn't have huge volume on any normal given day. It's pretty much like in these three, four hundred dollar range, and this is fine, but I don't think this is really here. I think it's probably somewhere around here, and it's probably gapping. It's just not enough volume, but I'll put it on the secondary watch list here. There's like a bazillion things gapping today, just you know, which is again why you have to have a system defined to narrow it down. Otherwise, otherwise you don't get anything. I mean, you're just my only issue with this, I really like it, is that for some reason it's not moving ever since the last tick. Time of the day here for the last tick here, 810, and then we have one tick here at 843. I I just I know this is gapping. I just it's the only thing that's bothersome about it, but I really like that gap. And I see the area at 17, Tom. I see it. I see it. I'm not going to watch Shandisk out of the gate. I'm either going to watch AEO or QSII. BGG? Why does nothing have any volume today? That's what I'd like to know. What's the reason for this gap? Any reason for this gap? Sympathy play? Real gap on its own? Do you know, Tom? This isn't half bad either, except for the fact that, once again, no volume. This looks good, but it's just so difficult to watch things immediately with no volume. I, I like this. I, I, I like this a lot better than this one here. Okay. This isn't bad. I still think QSII is one of the best in AEO. And, and, and I like this. So let's figure out the targets. And we have to be realistic here. 450, 446. I see that too. Let, as soon as I get to AEO, we'll go over that then, Tom. Let's get these easy peasy ones out of the way. Target for this is 450, 446. If this rallies, this is a short no matter what it does. If it rallies up first, let it rally. The maximum resistance area is right here. Look at that. So beautiful. 554, 555. 555, 554. I don't think it should go over 560. So that's the last number there. And if it really, really, really is weak, it might get up to this small little area here and go, even though it's over the 50, this could go and rally up to 520-ish, 525, 520, 517, I'll even write down 528. This is probably going to be very easy to trade. This is not really that hard, I don't think, to do. Now, I've never traded this in my life, but it looks like it's pretty friendly. Five sixty is a dead on number. Don't short this over five sixty. Uh, these are the smaller numbers here. Uh, 
I'm just going to do some quick numbers here on Sandus for those of you that like Sandus. Sandus really, once it gets momentum under it, just goes. I mean, Sandus, if it gets some momentum under it today, it would be selling out of the long position. The stock's in an uptrend. It's just gapping down here. If the market comes in, Sandus will too. Target 69. When Sandus gets momentum under it, here's the target. 68.58. Sandus gets momentum under it. it. It it really you can really get paid, but you you know it moves. I haven't traded this stock for a long time. I guess it's it hasn't been gapping down. That's why. <clears throat> so, yeah. For this to be clean, it shouldn't go over 71 and should go right away and just drop down in here. But again, the problem is area of congestion, price congestion here. What's the market going to do right away? This will probably go with the market immediately. So I, I'll have to say 71.50, and that's quite a ways up here, but it's still okay if it rallies up to 71.50. I think you got to give yourself two trades in Sandisk if you want to do it. It's worth It's worth it. Uh, this is going to work today. It's a, it's a 19 because the 19 rating also accounts for sloppiness, not clean. What mm -hmm. I like to say is clean. Uh, I mean, I think something's going to set up clean. I don't think it sets up clean today. It could. It might. I mean, EXP, was that the weather from the other day? That ended up setting up clean, and I was shocked. Uh, big stops initially, but it did set up cleanly. All right, let's go over AEO. AEO is 10 cents here from the first target. And I see that, except for I see something else here, Tom. Look, look at this. It's a double bottom. That's going to that's gonna be broken. So here's the thing. I actually really, really like this. Now, it could, it might rally first. And if this rallies first, then the chances of this breaking it today are probably very slim and none. If this wants to set up, this is one of these weird, weird ones that should go right a ways. And if it does, even though it's had the red David tip four, it's been down a week and a half here and everything else in the chart. This is a really weird, weird ones that should go right away. Because if it does, it's so close to the number, it should break it. But is it going to do that? I don't know. It's either going to fail immediately or rally up to resistance and set up as a short and then come down in here and be done. So I think if it fails, it fails and you, to, you can see the failure right away. Best case scenario, it goes right away, it breaks and goes weak and drops. If this rallies at all, it's not going to meet the requirements because I think this is what they should do. They should pop and go or do a one minute low and break. I don't think it should rally at all. It's down a lot. It had all of this going on here and normally I'd say fine, but no, not the placement of everything that's going on in the chart. It needs to actually just go. And I actually like this, Tom. I like this because I know this will be broken. Whether it be broken today it remains to be seen. I think it's going to happen almost immediately. There's only one problem here. Look. Wrap. So many people in these things. 1380, 1380, 1380. This is this is a short. I mean, so we can watch it. Look, I mean, all the numbers make sense. And let's just figure out the target. I will say one thing. Well, let's go back. I think the biggest target today is QSII, though, because it's 16 bucks. Let's just see what the target is on this to see if this is worthwhile. Twelve seventy-five, twelve fifty. Twelve seventy-five, twelve fifty. And we have to say $13, but I'm just writing that down for so because it's a whole number and it's 15 cents under the area. It's going to take skill to trade this well today. I, I think it works. It, I think it works, but it's not going to be easy. I don't see anything today that's going to play out easy, except for maybe QSII, but it's got to get the volume in it. And, and if it doesn't have volume in the next 25 minutes, then I'm not going to be able to watch it. So... I don't think I, 
I don't see anything today that's going to be easy, but I see a lot of nice gaps. So take it for what it's worth. Do half size and some things today then. This is still sitting here. I don't know why it's not moving. I like a, you know, just like everything about this chart, so I might be watching that. I also like this. It does have volume. We might be watching this. Numbers are very clear on this. Let's look at some of the other ones before I look at the QSII. This does not have enough volume. This. I just don't want to do. Uh, Infi is good. So just follow through continuation. It's not moving. It's just not moving. Good morning, candle. What was the other day? It was pets. It was pets. Pets had no volume. I said, I know this is going to gap. In fact, the earnings came out and it didn't even have a tick. And I said, I bet this gap's down. And it did a gap down. It had no volume, no volume, no volume. Fell off the planet and then fell off the planet the next day with no volume. I mean, it's hard to position size trade in those things. You can take a position, but you can't even put in a stop because you can't even feel like you can get filled. And put the stop in if you want. Is it going to fill you? Probably not. Look, the market's actually coming in here now. All right, let's quickly go over the market, and then I'm going to look at QSII, and then we're going to look at Netflix. The QQQs I do think are going to be bearish today, and the SPY, which is heavy. heavy. SPY is heavy. SPY is heavy, and I think we come down to one, well, 183. We're only 20 cents from that now. I saw 183 this morning, but we were back up at 183.50. 60, look, we just got down to the target. We might try to rally first into an air resistance and then break, which is not going to be good for shorts right out of the gate. And some of these things are sloppy, so we will have to watch the market at the same time. Uh... I just I think we're coming in today. I said that an hour ago and, and it's just confirming it now. So but I don't think it's some huge red bar. I think it's gonna be red. I think it's not gonna be a monster red. Uh you know, dream target in the queues today is eighty seven fifty. Dream target in the spy today is one eighty two fifty, and we're only seventy five cents away from that. So I I don't think we get down to one eighty two. We might. I, I don't know. It might pull all the way in here. So this did not get up over 400 yet here, this Netflix. I think that's where it blows. Whatever the, the, the blow point for this is 400. I, I wouldn't put it past this to open and swoosh. It's a buy. I think traders are going to try to short this today. Do not short this. If you listen to anything I say, do not short Netflix today. And I don't even care if it goes red. I don't care if it goes red and comes into 350. Don't short this today. This is a new buying in the stock. And if the powers that be that are controlling the stock want to buy it, wherever they feel like buying it, they will buy it. It could come in and show like, this could actually reverse swoosh in the beginning of the day, and I still think it's a buy. So, I mean, this is like, just don't short it. Buy it on a setup. Give yourself two trades. Don't trade it if you don't know what you're doing, but it's a buy. And over 400, it blows. And it didn't get there yet. So I know traders are going to try to short this today. It'll be very interesting to see what it does, but it's a great, 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 great job. It's just the best thing I've ever seen. I mean, we're going to talk about this today and we're done trading. I'm not trading it today. I actually did consider it, but there's some decent shorts, so we're going to do what I normally do. I thought if there wasn't any good shorts, I'd do Netflix. And I wouldn't put it past myself, actually, if I have a good morning here with something else to do Netflix later. Uh, it's just, it's a buy. Okie doke. All right, let's do the numbers in QSII. Ken, Ken, are you there? Did you do anything with that Netflix yesterday on the earnings? Did you see it last night? All right, let's figure out the targets for this. This 
unlike the AEO could rally and still be doable. So, you know, this could rally and then here's the target. Or if it wants to go right away, I see what you're seeing here, Tom. I see what you're looking at here. I mean, actually, it's closer than 17. It's 1720. 1720. 1720, $17, $16.62, and $16, which is over here. There's the $17.20 again. $17.60. I just think this is a really good gap. You know, I think this is a really good gap. And there is congestion. It's not close, but it's close enough to warrant consideration. Um, it doesn't mean it's not going to get through the areas, but it's, I don't think it drops off a planet quickly. Uh, I think that's, that's going to be the issue here. I think it's almost better if it rallies. 1780, $18. I don't know what I'm doing here. And it's just because everything kind of rates the same. Uh, some of these things look good, but don't have a lot of volume. Where did this end up going? 1325 was a low. Nope. Here's the numbers for QSII. <clears throat> and I'm putting these numbers in here for these targets because if the stock rallies first, then here are the numbers for the targets. If it rallies first. Doesn't have a lot of resistance. Tell somebody tell me why this is gapping. Whoa, look at the volume in this now. Woo! Why is this gapping? Does anyone know? This isn't half bad. <clears throat> Don't have that at all. Um, I looked it up, Tom. Let me look it up again. Two reasons something with the CEO and a downgrade. I don't feel like rating this. I'm not sure how it would rate. It probably would be like a 19. I, I think it works, but it's got a rally. I, I, you could trade this on the fly. This isn't this isn't a scary stock to trade. You could trade on the fly. I'll here. I'll quick give you the numbers. Remember, this is a snail. This is a big, 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 big bar. It's 25 cents. This is a snail city. Okay, if you didn't like doing the snails yesterday, you're not going to like doing another snail today. Those of you that don't like snails, it's a snail. $7 is a target. Every penny here counts. $6.88 is a dream target. Resistance is $7.60. Yeah, Brett, if you want to do a snail, fine, but some of you were complaining yesterday about uh, IAG was a snail, AMD was a snail. I'm just saying, if you don't like snails, don't do them. <clears throat> you really got to go with the best gap today. I don't know why this isn't moving. It's problematic. Uh, AEO has a crazy amount of volume, but I do like it. I can't lie to you. I'm not going to watch Shannon's out of the gate. I'm going to flip and watch maybe the ZHNE or 
AEO or see if QSII swooshes. The only way I'm going to be able to do this is if it opens and swooshes. There won't be enough volume, time for the volume to come into this to play it. So if QSII swooshes, then we can do it. And it very well might. I mean, it very well might have actually could. Or something like this here, the BG. If somebody sees this BGG swoosh, let me know. Netflix realistic target today is 420, 425. Those are the targets on Netflix today when it blows over 400. If it doesn't, um, it needs to just go right into the open. I don't want to give you any support numbers. Open and go. Open in a one minute high and go. Open and swoosh. Open and go immediately out of the gate. No support numbers. Open and go. You know, you have in your mind what you know something's supposed to do. We've talked about this before. You don't make any excuses for it. Let it, let it work or let it not work. I mean, there's no reason to argue with it. <clears throat> I might actually watch this AEO. Uh, do I want to? We could do what? We could do one snail with a regular one. I'll put Noak on the list. We could play that on the fly. We could do one snail and then maybe QSSI, QSII or AEO. Uh, there's a lot to look at here today. I don't want to start getting nuts. Before you know it, you're in two or three plays and, you know, you got too much to manage. Let's just play it by ear here today. I'm watching AEO, ZHNE, QSII. I'm going to grab something to drink, and I will be right back, and we're going to get ready to trade today. We will be able to trade today and get some movement and things. we got the market on our side. I got a bunch of gaps. Nothing screams, take me, take me. My favorite gap was FIO. It's not working. This is not a buy. It's a, it's a bust. It's actually a short. It's it's a it's it's a terrible gap. It's a terrible gap. It's it's just a waste of a gap, basically. It was gapping down last night. Now it's gapping up. You can't buy this. I mean, you can almost short it, but I can't do that. So it's like a waste. It's a waste of a chart. We'll look at that later too. Okay. All right. I'll be right back, everybody. Situate yourself and figure out how many trades you're going to take today. I wouldn't get nuts, but there is some good things to do. Nice volume in this guy, whatever this is. All right, I'll be right back.
All right, does anybody have anything for me to look at at the last minute they want me to look at? Let me know. It is really tempting to think about doing this Netflix today. Mainly because it's the best gap. This is the best gap today. Of all the gaps. It's just... This is. And uh, unfortunately, this QSII, which I like a lot, is not trading enough here this morning to do out of the gate. So I don't, I, this will trade plenty of volume on the day. I don't know what's going on here. It's not come up on anyone's radar, but I don't think we can watch it in the open. So I'm going to look at the ZHNE. Uh, look at the note because it's a snail, and like I said, we could do one snail and one other thing at the same time. I, I think I'm actually going to watch AEO out of the game. So for those of you that don't like this or don't want to do it, you know, You can watch the note. You can watch this. And I would not advise doing Netflix unless you know what you're doing. This is not for the faint of heart. It's really tempting to, sh to, to do it, though, to buy it. <clears throat> the stop is going to be huge, though. If this does a one minute high, the stop's probably going to be $5. It could be more. You'd be, you'd be, if you took 100 shares, you're probably going to have to risk 500 bucks, literally. But it could run up like, you know, $10 in like two bars in five minutes. Uh, QIHU, I don't remember if I looked at it this morning or not. I think I did look at it this morning. I'm not crazy about this. I didn't even read it. I'm not crazy about this. Market's coming in today, so all these things are probably going to work with the market, but it doesn't mean they're going to have clean setups, okay? The market is bearish today. The market's going to pull in. Now, that being said, the market could rally first before it comes in, so be careful. Some of these gaps that aren't great will work today with the market, okay? Would I do this normally on its own? The answer is no, I didn't rate it. I did look at this this morning. But a lot of things are probably going to work today to the downside because of the market. But I think the market rallies first, so be careful. Okay? Why? Because we've been coming in all morning. We just came down to a little mini area of support, and I think we try to retest ourselves and push back up against it from the bar from yesterday before we go. I don't think it's going to be $89. I think it's going to be on the open, $88.75. We could push back up $0.25 cents before we break. That could happen in five minutes. It could take 15 It could take 30 Boy, this is so tempting to do this here. <sighs> All right, so I'm going to aggressively do AEO today if it sets up, no matter what it does. Know that this has a chance of failing because of the it's so close to the area. But if it breaks, it's, it's going to rock and roll, okay? First target really is 1275 and 1250. But I think if it breaks 1315, it's going to work and could go down to $12 today. I want to see how weak this sets up here into the open. That is going to tell me a lot about what this is going to do here. And if it fails right away, then we just don't take a trade in it. I think it's going to have a two penny spread or so. And I do like the QSII, so I'll be looking at it later, but right now it's just too thin. Too thin, too spready. Sandesk needs the market too. Netflix, I can't wait to see what it does. Nokia is a snail, but you can do it. Don't let it get over 750 at the max. 755, 750. Okay, good luck, everyone. Take it easy today. I mean, there's lots of stuff to do. I don't think we need to get nuts here into the open. Why? Because there is a lot of stuff to do. If the first thing I like doesn't set up, we'll, we'll flip to something else. Okay, there's a lot of opportunity here today, but. Nothing screaming fabulosity, really, except for Netflix. That's why it's it's tempting, but 
there's too many down gaps to watch, so I'm just going to watch them. Okay. Good luck. Somebody tell me if something squishes. Nope, see this didn't even go to the right price. Mm. Oh, look at this. Uh, that looks good. Huge bar though. Here's the attempt in the sell-off on Netflix. Don't, don't short this. It's an amazing bullish gap. Do not short it. Sixty-nine by five. We're gonna have to put it at five twenty. Jeez, this is a big stop for this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's see if we get a better entry in this. That's too big. Do it if you want to. I'm gonna try to see if we can find a better entry in that. Ayo, ayo, take it right here. Take it right here. Quick, put the tits. Take it. Put the stop at thirteen, thirteen forty, thirteen forty. Get it in at thirteen forty. Shoot. Where did I get filled? Well, I got it. I got it. I got it. If you watch this on your own, you're you you already got it. Stop is 1340. Well, this just backed up here. Uh, it's not that far from the price. If this backs up here, I'm gonna take more to better my price. The real entry was 21. Real entry was 21. I'm not that far from it, but okay, all right. This is going to break 1350. Here, 1315, I mean. Here it goes. Woo! Oh my gosh, I almost missed it. I almost was thinking not to take it and I just pressed it. I barely had time to give you the stop though. I just said, take it. And you can figure out the sizing later. I moved off of it for a millisecond. Ah, here it goes. Actually, I think I oversized myself in the end, which is fine. But I gotta watch this here at 13. I I, I didn't think the stop would be this big, but it's because I missed the exact price here at 21. Did anyone get this with me? You had time to take it, and then it actually backed up to like 17 there. I mean, you could still do it here, actually. Gosh, this is so tempting now to take more, but we really can't lower the stop. Stop has to be 1340. Yeah, that's what you do, Ed. When you take a small size, you don't want to miss it. One more breakthrough through the low, I'm going to take half off of what I got, okay? Just because I realize now that I actually risked more. Here, under 1306, under 1306. Next drop down, I got to get out of half of this because I actually risked more than I wanted to in this because I didn't have time to size myself, but I took it and had a number in there, but just let it break. Let it break under 1306. See if it breaks 13. I'm out of half of this. Anywhere it goes, the next red bar. Go, go, go. Go. <laughs> Steve is already out and done for the day. That's fine. Hold on. This can't do a double bottom. 1306, 1306. Come on, AO. You can do it. I know you can. Shoot. Don't you dare do a double bottom here. It's going to break it. Hold on. Let's look at the market. Pretty short of the market. I really think this is going to break it, but I just did a double bottom. You could have taken some out here. This just closed the double bottom, but I think it's going to break it because of the fact it's broke the area in the daily chart. I'm, I'm, I'm in it. I'm in it. The stop is 1340. I want it here. Here, come on. I know you can do it. You can do it. Here we go. And the only reason we had to give it the cushion we did was because at one point the spread was three pennies. 
and we'll go over that later. Here, excellent, 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 excellent. All right, we're, I might be out of this whole thing if it has a nice big drop here. We'll see. We've got the market. Timing is good. It broke. I think this has a huge potential here today. 12.50. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Over at 13.10, I'm going to take half out. And then um, I'm going to put the stop in for the rest where it needs to be at the high of the day. So 13.11, I'm going to be at a half. I'm trying to let it break. I'm trying to let it break one more. Oh, shoot. Come on. No. All right, I'm just going to stay with it. Okay, I'm staying with it. I still have the whole thing. I was going to take some out here, one drop down, but it only dropped by a penny. So I think it goes some more. All right, so I'm staying with it. I haven't had time to call anything else. This ended up working. You could have done it. You could have done this after uh, it's set up here. Noke. Noke you could have done. Noke you could still do. Noke you could do. Put the stop at 725. It's an 11 cent risk. Target seven dollars though on this. Remember that's a snail. All right, we may get a place to lower the stop here. Let's see. Let's lower the stop on this. What I'm doing is lowering the stop for half at 1325 and half over 1340. Half at 1325, half at 1340. That's what I'm doing. Just to protect myself here a little bit because I actually didn't take any out. But I do think this has a nice target today. And you could have been out of some in there. I just thought it was going to go all the way down to 13. I still think it breaks 13. But I just split it up by halvesies. Don't short this. I'm sure people are shorting this. I'm sure someone in here is shorting this. Uh, what was the other ones on the list? Sandisk. <gasps> Sandisk worked. Okay. All right, you can do an ad here at 13.09, but I really would put the stop um, for everything at 1325 if you do the ad. In fact, we could put the stop, time of the day is 13, 940. Let's wait. Ad is 1309, and I might lower the stop for the whole thing then at 1325, uh, but it must trigger. I don't know if I want to take any more of this or not because of what I have now. Well, I think I'm going to. Wait till it hits. And I'll give you a different number if it's a different number. Okay, so I have half my stop here, 25, and half over 40. I didn't get out of any in here. I hope that wasn't a mistake. Ah! Oh! No, it didn't hit 09. Wait till 09. Wait till 09 to do the ad. Wait till 09 to do the ad. Wait till 09 to do the ad. Boy, that hit hard, didn't it? No, it didn't hit it yet. Wait till 09 to do the ad. I 
I'm going to break 1310. This looks great. Two minute is 1309. Then I'm lowering the whole stop for the whole thing at 1325. After it actually triggers, though, you've got to wait for it to trigger at 1309 which it didn't do yet. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep what I got because I have more than one hour risk in here. But if you want to do an ad at 13.09, that's fine. I'm gonna lower the stop for the whole thing at 13.25. And if you got out of this whole thing, you could take a new trade at 13.09 by 25. This is taking a while here. That's what I would have done if I had gotten out of some in here. It moved so fast, I didn't have time to get out of any. I literally was just thought it was going to break harder. It only broke the low of the day by a penny. I should have just taken something out here, but it moved so fast that I decided to stick with it. So that's why I split up the stock, 25 and 40. But you can take more at 1309 or a new train. I put the stop at 13.25. Time of the day is 9.41. This is good here too if you want to do this Z-H-N-E. It's trying to do a sandwich here. You can take it on the one minute here aggressively. 81, this is a spread in it. I put the stop at 91. Or you can wait till it does a full sandwich. Stop still has to be 91. Market's coming in here, so there's the buy in Netflix. Okay, I I I couldn't call this because I'm watching something else. Netflix looks like it's trying to hold an area here. We'll see if it does. That's why I told you not to short it. I told you not to short this. I wouldn't be surprised if this blows over the high. Okay, let's get situated here. Gosh, that better not be in the low of the day. so fast and I was looking at too many things. SanDisk had a huge stop. Huge stop. Uh, what did this one do? Still too thin. All right, so I have half my stop at 1325 and I'm really not going to move it. Okay, and the rest at 1340. So we'll see what this does. I didn't get out of any of it. Three pennies from taking me out here, the half of it. It's got a hold here. Whew, oh my gosh. 24. All right, actually, I'm going to put the other half at 27. I barely, barely missed out on that. I mean, barely was safe in that. 1327, I just put for the half. And if this hits under 09, I'm putting the whole thing under 27 here. 27 is half, 40 is the rest of it. All right, well, we're going to have to wait till the next reversal time, 9.45. Let's see what this does. What's the other one we're looking at? Infi. No, Infi and no volume, BBY today. Nope, nothing here. Okay, so the numbers I gave you before for the ad are different now. If you want to take a new position or ad, it's going to be 1312 by 27 on the two minute. The one minute aggressively will be 15. 15 by 27 or 12 by 27. I wait for the two minute on this one to come back down again.
I actually think I am going to take more under 12. Whole stop, then I'm going to put actually at, um, I'm going to put the whole stop for everything at 30 once it, and I'm going to do an add at 12. I'm going to do an add at 12 and the whole stop at 30. You can take more of 15 though right here. 12, I'm taking more. Stop's going to be 30. Wait till it hits. Thirteen, twelve. Ah! Take it! Thirteen, twelve! Jeez, this thing is moving fast. Get the stop in. Stop for everything now. It's thirteen, thirty. Thirteen, thirty. Thirteen, thirty. Thirteen, thirty. That's it. Thirteen, thirty. Now forget the high of the day. Thirteen, thirty. You can take a new trade there. You could have taken it at thirteen, twelve. It hit so hard. This thing is going so crazy today. 13.09 is the five minute stop, so it has to be 13.30, and this is it. This is it. Wherever this goes, we'll see. Let's get realistic here about numbers. Let's get really realistic here. I answer questions as soon as we're done trading here. After 10, after 10. I honestly really, really, really think, well, we're going to have to watch this here. Well, we're going to have to watch this here too. It's like it's going to do every area. It's going to do a little widget. So third, 13, 1285, 12.90, 12.90, 12.85, 13, 12.60, 12.55. Every little teeny weeny 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 area here is going to need to do whatever it's going to do. Okay, whole stop is 13.30 for me here. Can't be over the high of the day anymore. All right, let's just leave it and be relaxed about it. I actually don't see anything else here that I want to do. Uh, this did work, but didn't break a new low. Nokia did work. Brett, you liked this this morning. Did you do it? It actually went to the target of $7. I called this late here. You would have had to do it up here, seven eighteen. You could have done it with a stop, 18 by 25, and then you could have been out here at seven oh two or $7. Okay, so this did have a nice move, but that's the target. It's at the target. This is done now. I don't think this gets anywhere else besides $7. I mean, well, the market is so weak though today. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe Nokia goes a little bit more. So I'm in this. We actually could have done Nokia and this, but I was so focused on this so quickly then when I saw it hit that I didn't bother with anything else. I think it's too late to get back in this now. This did not work out. Sandus was sloppy. Sandus worked as a short, but was sloppy and is not over the high of the day in green. No, nothing there. And Netflix is getting ready to go over the high of the day. It already did. Boy, this is, boy. <laughs> I hope no one shorted this. I said, don't short this. It's going to hang in no man's land. And it's hanging. It's now doing a bottom and tail and going over the high. All right. Ayo, what are you going to do here? What is your situation? Nokia worked. I wish I would have done that and this, but it's too late now. What happened to IBM? IBM didn't do anything right here today. Where is the bar from yesterday? It's disappeared. I have no bar from yesterday here on my chart. It's weird. I just lost my bar in IBM for some reason. All right, what was the other ones we were watching? GNC? GNC could have shorted. GNC could have shorted right in here. Actually had a decent stop. 23. Woo, it had a nice 75 cent move in here. This is crazy here, though. You really got to be tight with the stop here after this nutso bar. And looks like it didn't break the low. 
ICLD was the other one that didn't work. QSII was just didn't even open at the right place. WMG, nope, too thin. Sina, nope, doesn't look right either. CTRP, nope, this isn't right. JNS, JNS you could have done. JNS was really hard in here. This, this, this was this was, here. Here's the play in here. You could have done this here. Thirteen stop twenty-five. These things just had no volume in the morning. See, all the volume came in, and then they made these jerky tail things. Here's all the volume coming in, and you got to let it settle down, settle down, settle down. But it's tough to believe the price in the gap. We don't have any volume, and that was the problem here with this. That was a problem here with this. All right, so I'm in this now trying to be patient, which you do have to do. Why? Because the gap itself um, needs some time to get going. It's proven that it's weak, and it broke the area. It didn't break the whole number, though, of 13. It broke one area. It has to break the next one, and I don't think this is falling off the planet quickly. It did have a nice sell-off aggressively in the morning. Time of the day is still good. This is showing that it's fine. Um, it's set up on the 1, it's set up on the 2, it's set up on the 5. Stop is 13.30 now. Nobody should have to stop over the high of the day. I do think we're going to have to be patient between now and 10 o'clock and possibly 10 to 10.15 to see if it gets some more momentum under. It has to keep getting sold off here. That's what it needs. More selling and more shorts. So if you got out of the whole thing, that's fine. You could have taken a new trade um, when it hit in here. The aggressive ad was 15, stop 30. Or you could have done it 12 by 30. Or you could have waited for the 5 and done it 09 by 30. Here we go. Come on. But I don't see anything else to do. Here we go. Uh, Nokia. Jeez, Nokia is still going. Nokia actually looks like it's trying to break a new target. I forget the next number. It's probably 690. 690. I didn't call this trade in here. I saw this setup. I thought it was too late. But you know what? Everything's rolling over here because of the market. Everything's rolling over here because the market. The market's doing a sell set up here, but I'm not sure if this is the end of the story for the market pulling today or not. Remember, I didn't think the market was going to go someplace and have a big red day. I think we got to see what the market does here at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock will tell all we need to know here. Is the market going to hold here in the queues or drop farther in the spy? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. And there's Netflix. There's Netflix. It's going to blow as soon as it gets over 400. Man, that was a good call. Would have called the buy if I had seen it, but I'm doing my own trades. Here, go, go, go. All right, I have to get out of some of this here. What I'm going to do is I'm really, really, really have to pay attention. I don't want to miss the exit here in this. Next break through the low, I'm out of half of this. As soon as it backs up at all, I'm going to hold the rest. We'll stop at 13.30. See if we can get it down to the next number, which is 12. I don't know if it gets to 12.60 today. We'll have to see. If the market keeps running red, this is going to get for sure, for sure, to 12.60, 12.55, 12.50. If the market is done, then this has a mini target today. Oh, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I hope you guys did the ad. Wait and see if it breaks 13. i got to get out of some of this soon. I haven't taken anything off. I've taken nothing off. Oh, my gosh. I was sweating bullets there for a minute. Go. Break. This thing just moves so fast, though. I almost think if I should take it off before it backs up. Hmm. Okay, here's what I'm doing because this thing is like so crazy. I'm actually going to put the stop at 13.06 for a half in case it moves too fast against me. It's two pennies over the bar and then put the rest at 13.30 because my hand has not been fast enough this morning because it's been there. That's what I did. Half the stop is 13.06 and the other half is 13.30. I'll be out of half of this at 13.06. I actually put the stop in at half there because it's just, I said that before. Here, we'll see. 13.06, I'm out of half. Rest, I'm going to try to hold it through. See what we can do. It's always a good compromise. Uh, uh, uh. All right, I'm out of half. It just hit me out. Okay, so there, I booked half of this. Stop for the rest is 13.30, and we'll see where it goes. I, I, I really think this is breaking 13. I just didn't do it yet, though. <coughs> uh, this chart looks great, though, i got to tell you. So that's a good compromise. Again, money management, you could have played this so many different ways, so many different ways. Shorted it here, been all out. 
short of it here, but add half. Add in the, what it sets up again here. Here, it's going to break. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I didn't take the whole thing off. Here it goes. Here it goes. Under 13. Under 13. I know it's going to break 13. It wants to desperately go. And you can get out, you book it, you get green something, anything. I always suggest to do that. There's so many different ways to play this today. I, I, it's getting the rubber band effect. This rubber, you go there. Do it. The rubber band effect is really, oh. This looks great. Okay, so everybody has to be out of something here. You can't hold all trade still. I don't care what you do. You got to be out of at least half somewhere here. And I already taken off half back in here, so I'm I'm trying to hold whatever I have a little bit more. I'm see if we can get three reds. I want to wait and see what the market does here. Market's trying to set up again to come in again. All righty, here we go. So you have to be out of half though. All right, just letting you know. Time of the day is 9.55. Where did I say the next number was? 12.90, 12.85. All right, so we need one more push down here, and we'll see if we can get it, time it with the market. So that bounced off that area there because of the time of the day and the hit through the uh, uh, whole number. Okay, this looks like it's trying desperately set up again, but I don't like the double bottom, so I'm not going to call this again. It's trying to set up in the five minute. It's really might trigger, but I don't like the double bottom, so I'm not gonna call that. Sandesk is an absolute mess. Ayo, we're yay! Go! All right, here we go. Next number, I'm probably gonna be all out. Cause this is really getting close. Let's not get greedy today. This was a tough short to do in the sense of seeing the gap and knowing that it would work, and it did. Tom, did you do it? I know you didn't like it. We'll go over this later. Keep going. Here we go. Under 98. Under 98. Under 95. I'm so glad I grabbed this here. I mean, it was literally like I didn't have time to size myself, right? I actually took more than I wanted to. But as long as you get it. And Edward even said he just took it. And I said do that sometimes. But, you know, if you see you take too much, then you can get some out. Like what this went on to work. So you could have taken here. Under 95. Under 95. If this breaks 90, I'm going to take it all. Let's just see. Eight more pennies. <clears throat> Glad we did this. I don't really like anything else. Although you could have done Nokia. Nokia worked out. QSII was a bust. Didn't open at the right place. AO worked out beautifully. Market's coming in, and some of these things uh, look like crap. We really did the best thing here. And Nokia, you could have done. I kind of wish I would have did them both, but it's too late. Uh, under 98. Okay, we're going to make a new low here in the AEO. And then we have the Nokia. And this is still going. I'm shocked. Really nice show weakness there. Here we go. Ten o'clock. Here's the rubber band effect. All right, I'm gonna have to be tight with this soon here. Ninety-three. I think this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to take off half of what I got left. Half of what I got left, unless it breaks 90. Let's just see. No, stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Hands on the button. Stay with it. Hands on the button. Try to break 90. Shoot. 93. What I don't want this to do is have a big bounce with the market at 10. Here we go. New low. New low.
Hard and fast exit rules, I'm out of half of what I got left, unless it breaks 90, I'm holding the whole thing, and then get out of the whole thing in the in the 80s somewhere. The time of the day we have to watch. It's been falling, falling, falling all morning. I'll tell you in a minute. I'll answer questions when we're done. Just let me manage my trade here. 96. Here, go. 96. 91. Just break 90. Do it. Right here is where it has to do it. It's going to do it. All right. Hands on the button for the whole thing here soon. Try to break 90. Go. There, I'm out of the rest of the half that I have. I still have another half of the half, so I have a quarter, a quarter of the original position. I, I just took another piece off, and I'm going to put the stop back for the rest of it under 30, I mean over 30. I, I, I'm not going to hold the whole thing through the rest of what I have here through a 10 o'clock bounce. And, and now I have a quarter of the position from the whole thing, which... I ended up taking more than one risk on the thing, and then I did the ad, so it doesn't matter now. Stop for the rest is over 30. you got to be out of a majority of this, 75%, 80%. you got to be able to, to see if you can hold some to a bigger target. So a lot of times it pays, but you don't want to suffer where you're holding so much more left that you feel like you made a mistake not taking it all off. Uh, because I had a lot of this, I feel good about my day no matter what this does now. And that's kind of how you have to be mentally. You have to feel good about your decisions. And if you're concerned, then take the whole thing off. This is, this is, it's 10 o'clock. I wanted to give it a chance to break, and it did not break 90, and 90 was the next target. But I think this is worth holding something to get it down to another level. Although I don't think we can really lower the target here anywhere. <laughs> Well, actually, I think we could. Hold on. I mean, the stop. I'm sorry. I have it at 30. You know what? Let's put it at 22. 22. 22 for the rest of this. 13, 22. There. Oops, sorry. I just went up there. HLF, Jerry's in. All right, I can answer questions now and look at other stuff because my day is basically done here. We'll see what the rest of that does. H what happened? This didn't gap. It just opened and fell off a planet. What's going on? This looks like news. Looks like This looks like a halt waiting to happen. Are you shorting of this, Jerry? What's going on with this? This didn't gap. It just opened and fell off a planet. Looks like news. Let me look it up. Wowie. Does anybody know what this is doing? Jerry, do you know what it's doing? Let me look. Ed marking letter news. <sighs> Be careful. News and down a kajillion points. Did you short this, Jerry, or you just saw it? Did you just see it, or is anybody in the short? Investigation. Yeah, this is a halt. This is a halt way to happen any second. Don't anyone take this. If you're in it, take the trade off with profit as a short. If you're not in it, don't trade it. This is a halt ready to happen any moment. Oh, you did short it? You shorted it? Jerry, did you short this? I hope you're out. That's a beautiful short if you did it. I don't know how you would have known to do it, but... Well, actually, you would have known to do it for the overall weakness in the chart. I mean, actually, if, you, if this chart was on your radar for whatever reason... If this chart was on your radar for whatever reason, from the gap that happened back here, I don't know why this gap happened here or what was going on, but it actually didn't trigger on a nice sell setup here today. The sell setup was under 73. You could have actually shorted this on a sell setup here under 73 and just made $10. But the stock looks like it could get halted any second, and that's not something you want to be in, particularly at this price point. Because that's what they do when news comes out and something's down too much. This is down more than 10% of the stock price here. Look, it's going to go right to 60 if it keeps going. Okay, Nokia was a nice train. 
AL, we can find a place to lower the stop again, we will. Um, maybe we'll, we'll lower it again if this pivots here in the one and the two. Maybe we will. Maybe we will, actually. And then here. This is doing another setup here in the one and the two right now. Try to get over 13, couldn't do it. All right, you know what I'm doing? I'm putting the stop now for everything on this, just because it's probably a good decision. Um... Thirteen eleven. Thirteen eleven for the rest of this. Thirteen eleven stop AEO. If it keeps going, it's good. If it doesn't, I'm out of the rest at thirteen eleven. <coughs> okay. There's a compromise, another one. But it could very well keep breaking. I do think it needs to keep doing this now though in the five. Look at the spread on this. Jerry, did you really do this? The spread is insane. Let's look at Netflix. <sighs> did anyone go long Netflix today? Did anyone have the guts to do it? Ken, did you do it? Um, so this is making an attempt at the double bottom. Let's look at the market. Market is so crazy weak. And I guess that's why I decided to stick here. This is working still. That's why I decided to keep some of this still, because the market is still coming in. Target for the market, the first target on the SPY is 182.50, then 182, and then after that, um, 181.70, and I don't think that we break this 50 period moving average here today. 181.70, 181.50, 181.40. Uh, looks like we're going to get there. Looks like we're going to get there, and the Q's just broke a new low, and AEO has to break under 90. And Nokia is still going, which is unbelievable. I almost called this trade here, but I thought it was too late, and it bounced off the target. But you, you know, you could have done a new trade here at 704, a tight stop 11. 04 by 11, and you would have made, well, 10 cents, but it's still going. 690, 685, every five pennies is a target on Nokia. All these things are probably working here now because the market, everything's going to get pulled down. And I don't know why I don't have a bar from IBM, which is really weird. Okay, let's look at everything through. Does anyone have anything else they want me to look at? I'm still in some of the AEO, though I've lowered the stop down to 1311. I'm trying to let it see if I can break a new low. I've got the market with me, and I'm out of most of the trade. Sina, Sina you could have shorted. Sina had a beautiful setup in here. This was tough, though. This was crappy, crappy, crappy in the morning. Big stop here, but had a beautiful entry right in here, as tight as you're going to get for Sina. 25 cents plus a spread, spreads 10 cents plus a cushion. But it did run down here now and go a buck something, and is going to try to make a low here with the market. So who? Nothing. Tom, what did you say you were in? UNP? <clears throat> Twenty cents stop uh, spread in this. Stop was a dollar. Where did it go? It ran two and a half bucks. It's good. It's a good gap. Oops. GNC. GNC is still on on the move. Let's look at Starbucks. I don't know if there's anything else setting up right now that I can call, but it definitely, definitely, definitely in the morning had a lot of moves here with the market. No, Starbucks opened, came in hard, and bounced. Went to the 200 period moving average, got to the target you were looking for, Tom. I don't know if you did this today, but there it is. And, and this has to do one of two things. Break a new low and get under 1290, which was the one area I was watching, or it's done. I mean, this has had a nice move today considering the gap and everything else in this. Amphi is too thin to trade, which is kind of upsetting because it actually is really a nice chart. This QIHU did have a setup in here. Huge stop, though. A dollar plus the spread. Where did it go? Move three dollars. Move three dollars. Could have got two, two and a half hours out of this. I think this is an absolute messy mess, though. I would not go back into this now. This was a quick play out. This is what I mean by sloppy. This is sloppy. 
this is just really sloppy. But you could have done one quick playing it out. All right, there's the Nokia. Looks like that is the end for this thing. 693. If Nokia rallies up in a 15 minute chart, it's a sell today. Nokia is a sell all day today. Stop for this here is lowered at 1311. And you could be out of this whole thing here. This AEO was a nice trade. Uh, I don't want to see it do a 15 minute buy setup. So we'll see where this 15 minute close is. What were the other ones? TKC. Nope, too thin. So who? Nope, didn't work. Baidu. See, these just were really crappy. Market was falling on morning, and look at what this did. Set up here, went over the high of the day, set up it back in here. Really crappy. Just tough to do. We did the cleanest thing, thank goodness. JNS was the one that did work for this play here after the volume came in for a quick trade down here, but this appears to be done too. 11.85, 11.85, double bottom out. This looks weird. What's the other one? BRSS. Nothing there. BGG. What did FIO do? Look at that. What a horrible buy. It's working today as a day trade, but this is a terrible buy. <laughs> this is the exact kind of thing that makes people do things like this. In fact, we talked about this yesterday in the class. I used an example and I said, let's look at this chart. Somebody tell me about what AEO is doing if I miss it. Uh, this is the exact kind of thing that happens that, that, that sucks people into something, anything that makes it think it's done for the downward movement, which by the way, this isn't. So, but, but somebody will buy FIO today and somebody will make money on FIO today and think that they're going to get FIO up to $12, $12.50 or even all the way back up to 25 bucks. And someone will make money on FIO today. Let's pretend they make $4,000 buying FIO today. Let's pretend they make 10. And then they, they're, they're, then they start doing this. They do it with everything. Guess what then? AEO gaps down, they buy AEO. Then, then they lose. Then, they, then something else gaps down, they buy something else. It's something that anything they do with, they keep doing plays like this. Or the BBRY, which gapped up the other day. People do a play like this, they make money, and then they keep looking for them because they think that this is correct and it is incorrect and loses on so much, way more than it ever works, that it never pays. And so what happens is this is the kind of thing that mentally people will do and make money and remember the great day they had doing this, keep trying to replicate this train and losing. They may lose nine times and make money the one time. And of course, what are the results? The results are overall, they are down. But because the one time this worked and they had a great day, they remember that and keep looking for this pattern, which is not a pattern that works. Why? If you buy FIO today, you're buying a stock in a downtrend and people like to try to pick bottoms and it is the silliest thing in the world to do and so dangerous. And it's, you're a bad trader if you do that. That's all I have to say. Look at what FIO did back here. FIO had a gigantic bar here. Almost three dollars plus, and then it rallied all the way up here to fifteen fifty. And what did FIO do? Within a month's time, gap down again. And this will do the same thing. <laughs> this will gap down again. So I mean, it's kind of like the thing where, in fact, it gapped down last night in the flipped, and I thought that was unusual because I expected a gap down. Well, it didn't work today, but that doesn't mean I'm buying it. But do you see this with this shit over here and then what it did? But this is the exact kind of thing that people do. And then they think this works. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. But because you make money on something one day, it doesn't mean it works. But people in their mind mentally, because their emotions are filled with happiness and joy, because they have a big day one day, they keep looking for that same play. But making money as a trader and being successful has to do with consistency. And that means that the pattern that you play, the way you're looking at the gap, the way you're looking at the price analysis of the chart must be correct. If it's not, you will lose more than you make money. And no amount of big days like this will ever cover all your losses from all the ones that don't work and something that flat out just does not work, which is trading against the trend, number one. And also doing something as silly as this, just like the last thing it did two months ago, three months ago, whenever it did it. So I'm glad we found something else to do here today. Stop on this is 1311. We'll see where it goes.
and I'm not going to move it now. Market's still coming in. Spy's still coming in. Spy looks like it's really coming in. Uh, Qs are down in the support area, prior support area. We'll see what the spy does. Let's look at the HLF again. It's a mess. Still probably gets down to 60 today. And for those of you that like to do climactics, again, I don't like those trades either. If you did that, I think this still gets sets up again and goes down to 60. I don't think this is done coming in. All right, let's go over Netflix. I said it would blow over 400. It did not get up to it yet. 395.63. It's over the area. So Netflix made a new high today. Whether or not it gets over 400 day, I don't know. But I want to point one thing out that's so important. Does anyone want to guess what it is? What do I notice about this? The first thing I notice about this, what does it scream to me? It says right away is what? Anything, tell me. Guess. Anyone. What is so dramatically bullish about this today? What, it, what makes you just have a thousand percent conviction about the bullishness in this today? Anyone want to guess? Anyone at all? Any takers? Nobody wants to guess? Tom? Small tail, volume, it's a down day. That's what I was thinking too. The one thing about this besides the fact there was, well, there's two things that, that come to mind. And actually two people in here did get it. The fact is that the market is falling today, falling all morning long, and Netflix is holding up and holding green and holding in the sky. That is unbelievably bullish. And the next thing is that this stock in the morning, very quickly here, look, here's where the tail is being made. So Netflix came in hard, and the market was coming in hard. If Netflix wanted to come in all day, it could have today. Why? Because it was a big gap. But instead of doing that, it held very quickly. One, two, three, four, hold. At a reversal time, 935. The market made the low of the day in the first five minutes of the day. That is so bullish, people. That is so bullish. And forget the market. It made the low of the day in a bullish gap in the first five minutes of the day, and that is strong. That is unbelievably strong. And you could have bought this aggressively here, and here was the buy, really. Here, 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 here but you would have had to be out quick. Here's the buy. So really the stock would have been under, it would have been a dollar fifty. No, it would be two fifty plus the spread. I figured fifty cents. It's a twenty-five now. But I think you have to give it fifty. Oh no, here it was sixty. Yeah, you gotta give it fifty cents. So the entry would have been three eighty one. The stop would have had to be really under 378 the whole number. So it would have been three bucks. Let's see where it went. 81. It went $14 plus. That was a 3R plus trade. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's so crazy. And actually, if I had done this, I would have lowered the stop here, and then I would lower the stop here. If I ever trade something like this, like that, I would be, I would be upping the stop. I would be protecting myself in this thing, or getting out some, unlike the other things I do. But the crazy bullish thing about this was, yes, the market, but this, this is really just terrific. So great. So when this was happening. I kept saying, don't short it, don't short it, don't short it, don't short it, don't short it. And I hope no one did. But at the time, when we were looking at this, I'm sure people probably thought of shorting it. Someone might have tried shorting it. Actually, if you shorted the one minute low, you made money, but that's a crazy, insane thing to do. But anyways, I kept saying, don't short it, don't short it, don't short it. And then it held. It held right away, and so I hope no one shorted it. <clears throat> So it is 1019. Netflix got up within, you know, five dollars or so of the target to blow. I think it does still have a potential to get there today over 400. But the market's against this right now. It might need 12 o'clock 
It might need 2 o'clock in the afternoon. 2 o'clock in the afternoon or 12 o'clock, whenever the market is done, done with the pull-in. I, I don't know when we're going to be done with this. That's the thing. Okay, we're still in this. I don't know when we're done with the drop down, but we will not, we're not going to drop all day to 4 o'clock. We're just not. So whenever we're done is when Netflix is going to start to situate itself here a little bit and then make an attempt to get up over $400 and make a new high again today. I, don't, I, don't, I just have no idea what the time that's going to be. It's probably going to be a setup on a 15-minute chart. It's probably going to be in a major reversal time. It's probably going to be when the market is done falling for the day at whatever time that is. That was a great call I made in that. I seriously thought about buying that today. I really did think about buying it today. And look, if you would have bought it here, actually the first buy was here. If you would have bought it here, you could have bought it here. Look, you would have been up like crazy here. And then you wouldn't have been, but you wouldn't have been down. And then here you would have been down. Would you have killed it? No. You might have, but you shouldn't have. But anyways, you wouldn't have had any time to get any out here. Look at that. That's a machine. So you, if you had bought this here at 81, you would have been up $7 and had no time to exit it. And you might have gotten concerned or scared and killed it. But it did actually give you an ad. It gave you an ad here. It gave you an ad here. It gave you an ad here. You could take it more here. I don't think this goes under this area here around 384. 384, 383. Look, look, it's setting up again. What a beast. I can't call this here, though. I think it's still too early. I think a 15-minute buy is the one to do on Netflix today, if you didn't do the one minute. Really guts to do that one minute, though. I seriously considered it, but, you know, there were good bearish gaps today, so we did them. Hey, we're still in this. Do, 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 do. You can take any train here. 98 stop. You can put the stop at 1309. Put it out. Put it at 1311 where we have it. Stay with us. Uh, 98 by 11. 98 by 11. Tight if you want to do it at 09, but I have it at 11 now. 98 by 09. Tight or 98 by 11. New trade if you want to do it here. It's setting up with a five minute. I have the three green bar rally. Setting up again. Holding, holding. Try to get over the whole number. Couldn't really do it. And holding. And trying to break a new low. Although, I just don't know if this gets to 13, uh, 1260 today. I, I think that's really a dream target here now because this is so weak. And I think it either pitters off here or breaks again or kind of just dies off. It needs more selling to get going. I'm still in it, but I wonder if I should just get out of it here. <coughs> Time of the day is 10.22. Tell you what I'm going to do. After this bar closes here, which it's not going to do for two more minutes, I'm probably going to put the stop over this bar, which is a trigger bar of the five minute. The reason I didn't take it is because, first of all, I don't I, I don't do bullish gaps. I would be doing uh, outside of the parameters of what I normally do, but I would have done it if we had no quality bearish gaps, but we did. I'm not going to start doing bullish gaps if we don't have quality bearish gaps. Instead, what do I normally do? I don't trade or I do a continuation gap. But today, it would have been nonsensical not to do such a great bullish gap that I'm in love with if we had no good bearish gaps. I would have done this over a continuation gap today. And actually, IBM isn't continuing. I don't know what the deal is with this. This looks like a piece of crap. And for some reason, I'll have the bar from yesterday. I don't know why. Um, let me try to reset up my charts again. I have no idea why I don't have the bar from yesterday. I don't know why it disappeared or I have no clue. No, it's gone. It's not there. It's weird. If I was alone, I probably would have did this today if you wanted me to be honest with you, but I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I never traded alone after the last year, so if I was alone, I probably would have done this if you want me to be honest. I don't think I can be trading $400 stocks and running a room. I, I, I don't think I can do that. So this is one of the downsides of running a room, I guess. Certainly familiar with the stock. But this would have taken my full concentration, and it certainly wouldn't be able to talk at the same time. It was a 3R plus trade. So it's not like it was a 20R trade. But, you know, if there wasn't anything else to do, it certainly could have been done. I told you to buy it. I'm sure somebody in here shorted it, and nobody's probably going to cop to it. But I told you not to do it. Blue over the high. Blue over the high, blue over the high, 
before 10 o'clock. Before 10 o'clock. I'll call this in here long if I see a setup. You can't do this now. Although it very well may break over the high again here, but this is improper. This is not proper. This is improper in here at all. But this could make a new high right now. Who knows? This could go to 400 before lunch. I think it needs a 15 minute, which is a full pull in, but there's nothing stopping this thing now. This is not going to come in. And I said it wasn't going to come in. We'll go over that in a minute. Let's just make sure AEO is doing its thing here. All right, I'm I'm going to lower I'm going to lower the stop very tight over this bar. It's it's not going to close for five more minutes, but I'm going to be tight with it now. The end of the story. I'm going to put a tight 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 stop three pennies over the high, four pennies. I'm going to give it thirteen oh eight, thirteen oh eight, thirteen oh eight. A O stop. Let me get it in. Thirteen oh eight for the rest. I'm not letting this go over here. I'm not letting this go over here. I'm going to give it tight over the pivot, and that's the end of the story for me. And some people are already all out of this. <clears throat> there, there are some things I don't do in front of people. This would have been one of them, but I, I think I would have done it if I was alone. And then the one day that I saw something that I could have shorted on the open, I forget the stock. I don't even remember now. But I can't, I can't call to do that in front of people and it's hard for me to do it myself. I mean, I could take a trade and I'm telling you I'm doing it, but then what's the point of me running the room? And I really can't talk when I'm doing things that I really, really, really have to concentrate on. It's hard enough now. Do you have any idea what it's like to take the size positions I'm in while I'm talking? It's not easy. I'm used to doing it. I'm in a group now. I've been doing this now for over a year, but, you know, I don't think a lot of people could do it. All right, let's answer questions. Let's talk about questions right now about anything, and then we're going to go over the trades, and then we're going to go over the gaps, and then we're going to go over Netflix. Any questions from anyone? Jerry, I hope you're out of this. See, it's setting up again. It's setting up again. This is crazy. I just cannot call this. I'm not calling it as a short. This still could get a halt today, so I'm not going to call it. I don't want anyone to get stuck in a halt today by a short I call, but I told you it was going to set up again. It really didn't even go climactic. This is not a proper climactic, by the way. Let's go over this first. Let's Jerry brought it up. Uh, this, look, some news came out, whatever time it was, somewhere around here, the news was announced and the stock fell off a planet. As it turns out, the stock actually was broken a couple of days ago. So if you had taken this gap on this day and actually held it overnight, what was a swing trade target? Well, you're almost there today. You would have gotten paid very quickly, kind of like the BBY, where you got actually to the swing trade target so fast you, you would have actually been in it as a swing trade short because of the gap back here from the 16th. And then you actually could have taken the profit off today for the swing trade here today. And this is almost a core trade target, really, because a swing trade target, 65, 65, 62, 50, 62, and 61, and $60, which doesn't gotten to, but I do think it does. I don't know if this goes climactic today. Why? Because sometimes when things are really, 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 really problematic, they don't ever properly go climactic because they are dead, dead in arrival. They have a bounce, but it's not a climo. A climactic is something that something goes and goes and goes and really goes hard right into an area and gets a huge bounce and you take it. This is not a huge bounce by any means. This is like not a huge bounce whatsoever. Could you have bought this here and made money into, the, into this? Yes, you could have, but there was no proper entry here actually. It did a sandwich. You could have taken it as a dollar stop if you did the sandwich. You could have taken it over the sandwich and made three bucks. You would have risked a buck to make three bucks. But this isn't really proper even for a climb out trade, which I'm sure people did. I'm sure people bought this and missed the short, but this isn't actually climactic here at all. It, this doesn't go climactic until it goes down so far past anything that it actually would do that. And that I don't think is even going to happen because I think it's just dead now. I think it trades down some more like it just set up again and possibly comes down some more in here. I think it, I think it closes looking very similar to this, to be honest with you. And what climactics usually do is go hard so far past an area, quickly bounce, and then end up retracing having these big tails or sometimes even go green. This, I think this is kaputsy. This is a short. 
But this triggered on a daily sell setup to day two. Follow through the continuation from the original gap back here in the 16th. Triggered on a daily sell setup as soon as it hit 73. That's not where it collapsed, though. It actually hit 73 all the way up here before the news was announced at 9.45. You would never have known to short this. I don't know how you knew to short this, Jerry. I, I really don't, unless you were in this trade from a core position from a couple days ago from the gap. I don't, I don't know how you knew to short this at all. How did you know to short it? You would have seen it on a scanner. Anyone could have fallen off a planet, but I'm not sure how you would have known to short it to get this. It didn't gap. It was a follow through continuation gap and triggered a daily sell set up and is going today with the market and had the news and drop. But the only entries are back here, and how would you know to do this? You know, that's the problem. It didn't get halted. Stock price is big. It could have gotten halted, though, because of the uh, way that it actually came down so hard. If it didn't get halted here, it's probably not going to get halted today, unless for some reason it does another disaster sell-off, which it could. It could sell off another disaster sell-off into the break of 60. I tell you, for this to go climb, it has to get down to like 56 or 55. If the stock comes down another $10, it'll go climactic. I don't even think it doesn't go like climactic here. Stock drops another 10 bucks, it'll go climb. It could happen. Right now, it's just setting up for a short on every time frame here, actually, even the 15 minute under 64.40. Oops. And we're still in it. Yay, yay, yay. You can still short this here if you want to. Put a tight, tight, tight stop at 1308. You could still be in this. You could take a new trade right here. It's 11 cent stop if you hit it right here. It's triggered on the 15 minute. Boy, what a nice call I made in this today. Let's go over it. So let's go over what Tom saw. Tom had some concerns. Tom likes a lot of things I like, but not everything. Tom's concern was what? What was Tom's concern? Does everyone remember? Or did anyone see the same thing as Tom? What were Tom's concerns was with this gap today? Does anyone remember? Did anyone else have any concerns about the gap besides Tom? And you might have had the same concerns, and I, I, they were valid concerns, so let's go over them. Did anyone not do this because of their concerns? Tom, did you do it or not? And then Lena, I remember your questions. I'll go back and answer them then. And then somebody else had a question, too. I'll have to go back. Nobody else had any concerns? Tom, you didn't do it. Let's go over Tom's concerns. Tom's concerns were this area right here, which, by the way, was a concern. But guess what? The gap rated 20 points. So, so I have the system. The system says the gap's still going to work, even though we have a concern. So... I have two options. I either decide not to do it and watch something else, or I can watch it, give myself two trades with it, okay, because of the concerns, or just go after it, which is what I did and what I do often. One thing I said, which played out very well, was what did the stock have to do? What did it have to do? Right into the open, right in the open, the stock had to do what? I said, I love this in an ideal world. I always say in an ideal world. In an ideal world, the stock opens, it shows immediate weakness, it doesn't rally. I knew one thing for sure, that if the stock rallied, it wasn't going to work right. It didn't. So we did it. Look at this. That was a great call. Tom, you're on Netflix. Wow. I talked you into that last night. All right, here was the entry, 1321, stop over 1340, it hit crazily hard. I don't remember what I was looking at at the time. They said I was looking at Nokia, I, I don't know, I was looking at something. And then I quick saw, I said, take it, take it. And I barely, I had told you where the stop was after I said to take it. I just didn't want us to miss it. So I oversized myself because I had a certain amount in there, which I estimated. As it turns out, I didn't think the stop was going to have to be 40, but this did have a three penny spread. I wanted to give it a cushion. And I was concerned that this might trigger, go boop, hold, and then go. What did that do? In the, oh, it was the one yesterday. So I said, you know what? Let's give it a little couple extra pennies. 
and then we did, and we're in, and we took it, and some people got all right out here when it didn't break 13, and that was fine. It also did a double bottom, and you could have got out there, and that was fine, but it broke so hard and fast, and I was thinking, gosh, how can we take more? How can we take more? What well, actually gave us a place to take more in here? I did not uh, want to crazily lower the stop, though. Why? Because many, many times, see, if you had taken this here and lowered the stop for everything here, you would have got stopped out. So what did we do? We made a compromise. The area, the area I said 25, here it was. Look, it retested the area of resistance in the tail, and we stayed in the trade. And then I said I'm giving it 30, and then we gave it 30, but not the high of the day. And then I took more. I had pretty good amount of this. And then drop down in here. Beautiful trade. Went to the first target, which was 13. What time of the day was that? 9.55. Beautiful. Hit the first target before 10 o'clock. Dropped on down and hit the second target here at 10, 10 to the 10 on the nose. 10 on the nose. So that's why you had to be out of 75-80% uh, of the trade here. Stock goes to the second target at 10 o'clock in the morning. It's going to bounce. But you know what the funny thing is? This isn't bouncing at all. So I'm out of this over 1308, the rest of it. I'm out of most of the trade anyways. Something like this that you don't think is going to run like $2, $3 of the day, and it has ads, take it. Take the ads, do it, stay with the trade, get a move, take it off. You're, you're, this isn't going to go to 10 bucks today. I mean, we're lucky this worked at all. It was a good call that I made, a good read of the overall chart here, uh, you know, because this might not have worked. And, and once again, do you see here? I'm sure a lot of traders didn't do this. In fact, I'm sure that I might be the only room that called this. The stock had a huge sell-off day here the day before and then gapped down more than a buck. Why is this working if traders aren't shorting this today except for us? Because it's getting sold off. The power money people, the people that are in control of the stock are selling off the position and that's all you need. You don't need traders to make money. You need real power money people to make money. And if you're with them, you can make money. This thing might go to 12 if you had traders in it too, or 1250 today, or 1260. But it's still having a beautiful trades, beautiful setups, working all the numbers. The gap is working. It's selling off, and we made money in it because it's getting sold off by power money. And that's all that you need to make money. I'm sure hardly any room, if any room at all, did this short today. It's the kind of thing that makes it gl me glad that I actually am specified in a certain area, which is gaps and bearish gaps too. You got to know how to read stuff to know how to do this. This is nothing but skill here because this wasn't easy and it worked. And there was nothing else that set up quite as well except for Nokia. So let's go over that next. Here, Nokia setting up for another short. Uh, you can do Nokia right here with the stop at 1715. It's setting up again. It's setting up again. If you really want another trade, seven cent stop, 715. If you want to do Nokia again, it had a huge run down. I, I think this is done for the day, but it could retest the low. 15 cents. You're risking seven to make 15. It's two hours. I'm done for the day here once I'm out of the AEO, but if you really want another trade, you could do this right here. Uh, it might be done, though. Let's go over it. If you had done this and watched it, had a beautiful entry. Where was it? Where was it? Not here. Here. 18. Stop. Would have been tight, tight, tight over 25 and moved on down. I would have been out of this whole thing here, I think. I can't see myself. Maybe I would have tried to hold a little bit here, but then after this far here, I probably would have taken it. I didn't have high expectations for this to break seven, and it did. Why? The market ran red. Nice scap. I saw this here. I almost called it, and I didn't. I thought, no, oh, this is a bad call. I don't want to make a bad call here when things are going great. And yet, it worked. You could have done it. But here was the trade. Okay. And actually, if you lower the stop over here, you would have gotten taken out. Or barely, almost. It would have been tight. Double bottom, double bottom, out. Dream target on this. I mean, it broke seven. Let's look at the daily chart. Setting up again, though, but I'm not taking any more trades here today. Here's where it went. Nice. And it could go to one more area here, 686, 685. Uh, it's got to break 90, though. Brad, I'm surprised you didn't do that because you liked it. You had conviction in this. I'm surprised you did not do it. It was a little tiny one for you to practice your own conviction in, and you didn't do it. You should have done this today. It worked. You liked it. You saw it. I didn't have time to rate it. You pointed out late. You had the conviction. you got to trust yourself. Trust yourself in what you see. You did the class. You know what to do. You could have done this on your own. It worked. Okay. Ah, no one even told me. going to break 90. Here we go. 
All right, so I still have some of this, and lucky me, and I lower the stop, so there's nothing wrong here. We're still holding this. Beautiful. And I called a new tray back in here, and this you could have done. It does have to not do a double bottom, though. 1290, 1290, 1039. All right, this can't do a double bottom. <coughs> Uh, over 96, I'm going to have to take it. This can't do a double bottom here and go one penny of the previous bar is high because if it does, then it's really not going to keep going because it'll be a double bottom in the 15. Good morning. Good morning, Lee. You're late. So here's what I just decided. Um, over 96, I'm out of the whole thing. <clears throat> In fact, I'm going to put the stop at 97, which will get me out with profit, but I just, in case it moves hard, 12.97 AEO stop for the rest. And if it keeps going, fine, but I'm not going to get caught here in a double bottom in the 15 minute. But I also don't want to be in this all day. I have the trends class, the second part today. I'm not going to be in this all day. Tom did Netflix long. Let's go over that next. Did anyone else do Netflix long besides Tom? Anyone cop to doing it short? I can't believe this. This is actually looks like it's setting up again. And after this breaks here, you could actually, it's trying to set up here in a failure here of the uh, failure here to do a buy setup. You could be really tight and put the stop at 712 if you want to. Sandisk is trying to go again. Spy, the Qs, AEO, I lowered the stop to 97. And uh, GNC. Okay, let's go over Netflix. Yeah, so here this five minute buy didn't fall through. This is too early, although I think it, 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 it this is going to play out and set up somewhere in here. Does anyone have anything right now live that you want me to go over before I talk about Netflix? Because I did talk about this this morning, but not everybody was in here yet. Before I talk about Netflix, is anyone in any trades right now besides the AEO you want me to go over? And actually, uh, Lena was asking a question earlier. Let me go up and read it. And then anybody, like I said, if you're in anything, I'll look at it. <coughs> Even if it's something that I didn't talk about. Lena's asking me, has anyone ever taken the class, the gap class, and not done well, basically failed? I'll tell you this, Lena, people have taken the class and quit. Now, does that mean that they failed? Well, it's up to you to make that determination. What I've found is that sometimes people, not that many, but some people, a few people have taken the class and then they quit. If you quit in a couple of weeks or a month or two months, whatever the, whatever the period is, I, I wouldn't say that person has failed, and I certainly don't think the class has failed, or I obviously, I mean, why would I think that? I'm doing, I'm doing what I teach, and it works, and I'm making money. But some people are not all committed 100% to their trading, and some people know more than others when they take my class. Some people are brand new and take the class and are committed, and even though they're new, they're committed to make it and will do the work to learn even if they don't know anything about trading and never knew anything before they took the class. So it's hard to say. It's like whether it's my class or any class, it would be hard for me to actually call someone, anyone a failure or say that anyone failed in anything. I think people do things in the market that are incorrect that they should not do. But I'd never say that anyone, you know, is a failure. I, I wouldn't say that about anyone. I think people sometimes quit too soon. That's their own issue and it's something else. It's not the gaps or the information of the class or anything else. 
sometimes people have expectations that do not meet their uh, level of understanding of what they know. Does that make any sense? Like some people have very high expectations, very small accounts, and not a high level of information. That being said, if you have a very small account and a high level of information, you can probably do well even with high expectations. It all has to be in balance. The amount of money that you have, the amount of knowledge that you have, and your expectations have to be in balance. If they're not, something will be off kilter, meaning it might take you longer than it, than it would for a normal person that's in balance. And if you get frustrated, this is what happens with a lot of people, if you get frustrated and you feel like it's too challenging then, you may, and it's not meeting your expectations if they're too high, you may quit. But I wouldn't call that person a failure, okay? I wouldn't, I wouldn't call that person a failure. And I've had people that have done the class, traded, taken time off, and, and come back. So, you know, I mean, I think, you know, people realize this stuff works. They see me doing it every day. They see me making money. They see other people doing it. Everyone has their own issues. Some of those issues have to do with the fact that they really have a lot to learn about technical analysis. But then some of the issues for people are that they have money issues. What do I mean by that? They can't stand like having a losing day. Like they, they literally will have one losing day and they will let themselves lose more than they should and then they will be in total 100% fear. I have people that are in the room that don't take my trades. Why? I don't know. They're paying me to be in the room. If you're paying me to be in the room, then you should take my trades and do exactly what I do. I encourage people to analyze and think for themselves and do their own trades, but it really doesn't make any sense why you'd be in the room and not take my trades. But some people don't. So, I mean, what do you, you, know, I mean, you going to do? I mean, it's like all you have to do is do the class and be in the room and take my trades. It doesn't sound that hard, but yes, some people want to quit. And they're not taking my trades. So, you know, I do the best I can to help people. But at a certain point, I mean, everyone has to be responsible for themselves. Everyone has to be responsible for themselves. You must be responsible for yourself and your own decisions, your own choices. And as soon as you recognize that and are willing to accept it, man up to it, woman up to it, you're, 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 you're going to be a lot better off, okay? Every day that I lost money in the market and failed, I knew it was my fault. I, I, I was very self-critical all along the road to trying to make money. I don't want to lose pay attention to my train here. Hold on. All right, I'm still in it. Um, all along the road when I was trying to make it, I never blamed the market. <laughs> I never blamed the gap. I never blamed the moderator in the room that I was in. I never blamed anyone else. I blamed myself. I was so self-critical that it actually probably was not good for me. In fact, the people that are my friends, Tom, I mean, the people that are my friends that know me, just, they, they know I was so hard on myself. I mean, it was harder on myself than any anyone could have been. Harder than the market was on me. Harder than anyone. That that drive that I had, that perfectionist, that, that attitude I had was, was, was hard for me emotionally because I would go to bed some, night, some nights hating myself. But I, I worked through it. I'm easier on myself now than I used to be. I would never be like that in front of people. But I'm very critical of myself because I'm a perfectionist and want to get things right. Most people are not like that. They just want to blame someone else, something else. This stuff works. If you are failing, you have to analyze what's wrong with going on with you. And if you want to give up in a month, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you, you know. Rick is making a comment. He says, it definitely helps to have a sash of savings so one or two days of trading don't affect you. Absolutely. And not only that, Rick, I'm going to add to it that you can't risk more than you want to, or are comfortable losing. So in other words, you know, I do these examples in the videos. I'm doing them with advanced examples. I've been trying to put in the beginner baby examples, too, for beginners. Do people want to do the beginner examples? No. People want to do the advanced examples. Hey, if you're not okay with risking uh, three, four, five hundred dollars on a train, if you're not okay with risking two hundred fifty dollars on a train, then you can't risk it. You should be doing the beginner examples, and I'm teaching people to do that. I'm teaching people to start out. Start out on a demo. Start out with small risk. Start out with 100 share lots. Start out risking 30 to 50. Many people I find get excited, come in here, start making money, do the trains, and then up their risk too fast. 
and then then want to quit. If, if you want to do that, then I can't help you. Some people come to me, then we work it out. I try to tell them what to do, then they get back on track. And then some people want to quit. But then some people quit and come back in two months. So, you know, it's I think it's just one of these things where you have to determine how committed you are to trading. The commitment does not have to be that you are going to take forever to figure it out or learn this. The commitment has to be that you are willing to be patient with yourself and not run out and risk the big money to make the big money right away. You'll be a lot better off if you only risk $50 and consistently show that you can make money for three weeks in a row because you'll be up, okay? Then starting out risking $200 and having one losing day where you're down $600 because you took three trades and not being able to get back on the wagon the next day. Whereas if you lose $50 in three trades in one day, you're down $150, you'll be able to get back in the wagon tomorrow. Anyone could. And if you can't do that, we well, shouldn't even be in the market. You've got to be able to sustain yourself to be able to lose on one given day. And if one given day is going to take you out, well, then you're risking too much. I mean, it's as simple as that. If that means that you, you know, you're a failure, I mean, I don't know. I just... I think a lot of it has to do with attitude. You have to have the attitude that you're going to make it and you're willing to do what it takes to make it. Doing what it takes to make it does not mean it's going to take you a long time. Doing what it takes to make it means doing what it takes to make it as far as the process of the steps. Step one, take the class. Step two, practice the trades. Step three, prove to yourself that you can do it. Step four, make your own decisions with your money management. Don't fall off the wagon with losses. Step five, up your risk if you can handle it. And step six is go back off if you feel like you can. So, you know, everybody, again, has to know themselves and know their own ability to be able to take risk. I have a huge tolerance for risk. It's not normal. It's, it's just not normal. It's not normal by anyone's standards, all right? That's probably why I'm able to trade in front of people and run a room and do all the things I'm doing and even be in the market and I'm meant to do this. Some people are, you know, able to trade in the market but can't take big risk right now. But it doesn't mean they'll never be able to. Maybe they need to trade for six months, risking anywhere from $50 to $100. And then maybe then they'll be able to up it. Some money is better than no money. And if it means you have to do a part-time job or a full-time job while you're making money consistently trading small amounts, if you can make an extra $2,000 a month trading for an hour a day while you have another job and do that for six months, you're going to believe in yourself. You're going to have conviction in yourself. You're going to say, hey, I know this works. I think I'm going to risk more. And then in a year, you're quitting that other job. But if you don't give yourself a chance to succeed, then how are you ever going to do it? If you fall right back on your butt into fear, you'll never give yourself a chance to succeed. And I've found, and I said this before, that many, 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 many people, you know, have got to examine some of their own belief systems. If you're in too much fear, then you're going to have a challenging situation with a uh, making the, the, the jump from one risk level to the next, beginner to intermediate, intermediate to advanced. So you got to do everything you can to make it easy for you. This looks like this is setting up right here, actually. Hold on. So that you're not in fear. That's why I have the wealth class. And you know what? I'm, I'm bringing this up right now. Here, let me write it in the room. The wealth manifestation class is Monday. You get a free month in the room with this class. This class, it's from one to... Uh, four. This class goes over this kind of stuff. That's a mental stuff. You get one month free in the room with this class. It's, it goes over the, some of these mental things which people have. The, it goes over the mental things that people have, and you do have to. You're gonna you're gonna have to face those things. I mean, I, I don't I don't know when you're gonna face them, but you're you're gonna have to face them. You're gonna face them now. You're gonna face them later. You're gonna face them in a year, five years from now. At some point, you're gonna to have to face some of your issues with money and fear and all the stuff that goes on with trading the market and risk. And if you never had to face them, someday you will. You still will. If the market brings up all these things, and you will have to face them, and you gotta know how to deal with them. And that's why learning how beforehand, even if you're not facing them, helps. And if you are going through some of these issues, then you really, you really need that class. Because if you have everything else going for you, you got money, you got a good system, you got everything, what is stopping you from make, being successful if you're failing? You. Then you got, you got to do some self-examination. And that's what it comes down to. All right. 
and 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 a lot of people don't want to do the self examination, but it's it helps you. It makes you a better person. We've talked about this before. It actually makes you more attractive. When you want to improve yourself and do self improvement, not only does it help your career, whether it's trading or something else, it helps your personal relationships. It helps your professional relationships and your personal relationships. There's no downside. There's no downside to doing self examination. We all have areas that we can improve upon. This isn't being critical of ourselves. This is being realistic and realizing we want to be better people. We want to be better traders. We want to be better human beings. We want to be more loving to the people that we love, and we want to do better in our professional lives. You know, and so sometimes it means doing some self-examination. By golly, I know it's hard. And Tom always says people can't change. People can't change. I think I've shown him that people can change because I've changed. I've had done a lot of self-examination the last few years, and he's seen that I've changed. And he's shocked, but he realizes now that people can change when, when they want to. If you want to change, you can. And if you don't want to, then there's nothing that I can say to help you change or anyone else. And so when people fail, Lena, it's because they are unwilling to change. They have stubborn, pessimistic, negative attitude, and they do not want to change. They want to blame everything on themselves, the market, everything else. And I find that when people need my trading records or things that I'm not willing to give, uh, proof, 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 when they need that proof, they have a mental problem that will never be overcome. And I could give them my records from the day I started trading, and they would, it wouldn't be enough for them. When people need guarantees that something works, then they are in fear. They are in fear. And if they go someplace and they give them the records at some place of some other thing, A, they may be the real records or they may be phony because people give out phony things all the time on the Internet. You see it all the time. I know people do it, okay? Number one and number two, the people probably may still not do well. Why? Because they're in fear. And that fear will prevent them from doing well even in a system that they get proof works. So I could give all the proof in the world to people. It doesn't mean people are going to do well. It doesn't mean people will do well at all. They have to be responsible, although I'm willing to help people. The one thing I think is that I am actually willing to help people. I will take your phone call. I will email you back, and I will be honest with you. I will tell you what you're doing wrong, and I will tell you what you need to do to stop. Brett called me on Friday, right after the room. Was it Thursday? I don't remember. And, and I told him... He told me what he did on the day, and I was honest with him what he did wrong. So if you are okay with that, I'm here to help you and tell you what to do. You know, I'm going to be honest with you, though. <laughs> it's to my benefit for people to make it, so I want to help people, you know. But I'll also tell you when you do something great. I mean, I'll also tell you when you do something great, all right? Did anyone do this? I can't believe it's still working. But some people don't 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 need the encouragement because they encourage themselves. You know, some people that are that are experienced and mature as traders that have done the class, they 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 encourage themselves. They they are making money. They're making money. They see the results, they're making money, and they're encouraged themselves every day when they get up. And every day they make money, it helps their conviction. I talk about conviction all the time. Conviction helps confidence. Confidence helps conviction. It all goes hand in hand the same. When you're making money, you're feeling confident, whether it's fifty dollars or five hundred. When you're making money in the trades that you have conviction and they work, tomorrow you're gonna get up the next day and have the next conviction. Let's talk about Netflix. I did not trade Netflix last night. I didn't buy it, but I made a call. I made a good call. And I said in the, in the class last night, you have no idea what this does for my personal level of conviction. I didn't make one dime on this trade. I didn't buy this yesterday at 3, you know, 35 and make $100 or whatever. I didn't, I didn't buy it at all. But the fact that I saw my call play out the way that I saw it doing, the fact that I'm seeing this here today playing out the way that I see it doing, I'm, I'm, again, it, it's beyond the money. It's beyond the money. The money's the goal, but my conviction is heightened by making this call, even though I didn't profit from it monetarily. And this helps my confidence. It helps my conviction. It helps me get up tomorrow and do the next thing. It helps me take AEO. When I say, I know this is going to work. Tom doesn't like it. He sees the area. I see the area. We see the area. I know it's going to work. I know it's going to work. I like it. I know it. I have 100% conviction. I take the trade. I take it aggressively. I take it at 931. I'm in. I make the money. I'm done. Yeah, I'm out. It just stopped me out, but that's fine. Why are the rest of this with profit? Where did it go? <coughs> 98. <coughs> Excuse me. But anyways, this helps my conviction. This, seeing this, 
it helps this, okay? Seeing this helps me do this, okay? Do you understand? Seeing this, believing in it, doing it, doing it the day, taking the loss here, and then seeing this helps my conviction. So seeing this, this is unbelievable here almost, really. It's beyond belief. Helps my conviction. So you want to tell me this gap system, you know, somebody doesn't make money doing it? That's, it's insane. It's their problem. Look! Okay. Too many of these work. So many of these work. More work than don't. If people can't figure it out because they got mental issues, that's their problem. And, you know, I've said this before. I'm not a therapist. I will try to help people, but some people need a lot more help than I can provide. And they need to go to actual real people like for help. <laughs> Edwin's done and done for the day. Good job, Edwin. Need to head out. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. Excellent. Very good. Anyways, let's go on with Netflix. It's just, you know, this is, it's just a fine line. It's a fine line with this, with this trading thing because it, there's a level of personal responsibility that comes along with this, and that's why people need to be aware of that. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell people they don't have to be personally responsible. They do have to be personally responsible. That's why they have to understand that learning is more important than anything else. If people didn't have to be personally responsible, then they could just be in the room, which I don't let anyone be in the room, you know, as a full time member without doing the class. Then people could be in the room and just take the trains. But I think people do need to be personally responsible. That's why I made a rule. You must do the class to be a full-time member of the room because you will learn what to do then and have the knowledge. And then if you can't get your own mental problems down, you can talk to me about them or you can go get some therapy because you will need to do that if you're having issues with risk and money. What I've found that many people do is they've gone through years of trying to figure out stuff that doesn't work in the market that's really actually just flat out not good and they've lost whatever amount of money they've lost. For some people, it could be a couple thousand. For some people, it's a crazy amount of money, actually, that they've lost to the market over the course of 5, 10, 15 years. And then they meet up with someone that actually knows what they're doing, but now their issues about fear are so huge, so monstrous, so gymongous, that even once they learn something good, they have such a big beast of a fear ball in them because of the money they lost to get to the point where they met up with me that they have to work it out. It's possible to work it out. You can work it out. You have to want to work it out. And you have to be willing to be honest with yourself about that. And if you can do that, you'll be fine. All right? Like I said earlier today, before a lot of people signed in, it's this is worth it. This is worth it once you get it right. Let's go over Netflix. Netflix is setting up here soon. <sighs> this might be it, actually. holding 387. It's holding 387. This is very aggressive, but if you want to buy Netflix, 389.73. Really, really over three, th 390. 390, stop under 387, and you've got to give it a cushion of 50 cents. The stop's going to have to be 386.50. If Netflix hold th holds 387 here, and sets up in the five minute. This is a quality trade. Stop has to be 50 cents under the number. You're welcome, Ed. Ed, I can't believe you didn't do Netflix. You love to go long. I'm shocked that you didn't do it. <laughs> Ed likes to take every long that I call. All right, let's go over this. I don't know. I just went off on another tangent there, but I hope I answer your question, Lena. You know? Part of the challenge here, I'm going to say one more thing, and then I'm going to talk about Netflix. Part of the challenge is, this is, this is, the, this is the mystery. This is the, this is the gray area. This is the mystery of the market, okay, is that there's a sea of information available to people to learn how to trade. 99.99999% of it is not good enough to make money. That doesn't mean it's all bad. There's actually a lot of good information out there that teaches you stuff. It teaches you real stuff, but it might not teach you how to actually make money. It teaches you things, 
You learn about moving averages. You learn about stuff. You take a class, you learn information. Any class you take, you learn information. I mean, there's something there. In every class you take, you can bring, get value from it. But is it enough for you to go out into the market and turn it into profit? A lot of what's out there is not good enough to actually turn into real cash. And that's what everybody wants. That's why they take classes. That's why they trade. Not everybody is like Jerry. Jerry's a, an education junkie. He loves to learn. He wants to suck up everything that's out there to learn everything that's in the world about the market and lots of things. Not everybody is, holds the same high value for education. There's a high value in education. Even if you learn stuff from things that you can't actually turn into profit, you might find it's useful for some way to help you in other things. So being educated is not bad, but a lot of people have taken classes in this realm of trading and not learned how to make money. And so as a result, people are skeptical. They have an attitude. They're, 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 they are not believers that any amount of education for any cost would be worth the price to, to take the class or learn it or pay because they feel that nothing is good enough out there. Okay, So people are very skeptical about things. I didn't realize that when I started the company. And to be honest with you, if I had, I probably would have never done it. Because <laughs> at the time, I never thought people were this, you know, skeptical. Probably because I only ever took one class. I only ever took one class, and I just decided to teach the stuff I knew was good, which is the stuff I do. And, and I never realized the skepticism that's out there about people about trading education. But I didn't take 10,000 classes. A lot of people have done a lot of classes and not gotten their money's worth from them. So then what happens, people tend to then, they, what they say, well, you know what, I'm just going to trade. I'm just going to put all my money into my trading account. I'm not going to spend any money in classes. I'm going to get all the free information I can out there on the internet. Read books, read free things, watch free videos, get all the free stuff. And then it becomes one big mumble jumbo. And nobody really gets a real foot on solid, solid ground even education or anything because they're just trying to take whatever they can for free anywhere and sticking all their money into the trading account. Does that get somebody success? No, no, it doesn't. So, but then that's the second thing that people try to do then. Once they don't see the bang for their buck from classes, then they say, well, I'm going to just put my money in my training account, teach myself and learn, suck everything I can out that's out there on the internet for free or the TV, talking to people, videos, whatever. And then that's the next stage that people do. That doesn't get them to be successful. And then at some point, you're going to, people have to make a decision. They have to make a decision. Are they going to believe in education again or someone that's a real trader or just carry along and just keep pittering away year after year and not really getting anywhere with it. I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have the answers. But, you know, I understand that uh, I can sympathize with people that have done a lot of classes and not been able to turn it into real cash. But I also understand from a personal experience that any amount of classes you took and any amount of money you spent is easy peasy compared to actually taking on the market, which is exactly what I did myself. So when people whine to me about the money they spent on classes, it didn't get enough for it. I, 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 I hear them, but it's, it just rolls, rolls off my back because I know that when you take the market head on, you, you are a fiery, fiery person to do that and a gutsy, gutsy person if you do it. And most people can't do it. And I don't suggest that people do. Although I tell you that if you really don't want to spend the money for a class, then take on the market your own yourself. You better bankroll yourself big time. And you better set aside about three to five to maybe 10 years of your life. If you want to do that and you can bankroll yourself with uh, no end in sight, then you can maybe figure out the stuff like I did or something else. Most people cannot do that. They cannot financially do that, nor do they have the time to do that. I just happened to be at a time in my life where I was still single and I wanted it so badly that I did it. And I did bankroll myself. Although at the time I had no idea it was going to cost me that much money. And it, looking back, if I knew it was going to cost me that much money, I wouldn't have done it, to be honest with you. I wouldn't have. Now, hindsight's always twenty twenty, and I say, yeah, it was worth it now. But if someone had said to me, this is write a check right now today, December 2008, for this amount of money, and I'll see you in three and a half years, I wouldn't have written that check. <laughs> I would not have done it. All right, so most people are not prepared. They're not prepared for the length of time, the amount of money it's going to cost them to figure out the stuff on their own. So in the end, where does it take you back around to? Taking a class. Taking a class and learning from someone that actually knows how to make money. So you've got to have conviction in the person that teaches you that they're making money. How do you do that? I don't know. Watch every video I have. Talk to people I've dealt with. Do whatever you want to do. But you're going to have to get conviction in someone unless you want to spend umpteen you know, years of your life and all this kind of money to teach yourself. You know? I'm still single, Tom. <laughs> I 
I was still single then and I'm still single now. Yes, no, I haven't gotten married. You'll be the first to know. Well, and you'll be the second next to my parents. <laughs> I'm still single. If I, the point is, if I hadn't been single, then I probably would not have had the time to invest in learning it. Unless I was 22 at the time, which I wasn't. And at 22, your brain does not conceptually have the maturity to understand things sometimes when you're in your 30s. So it was a good time in my life to do it because I was in my 30s and I was still single. So I didn't have other family and personal commitments that would have taken me away from learning. And I still had the drive. What happens is after the age of 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, sometimes people don't have the drive. They don't have the drive to actually throw themselves down in the ditch, get down in the dirt and dig the hole to figure out where the gold is. And, you know, when you're in your 20s and your 30s, you still have that drive to, to do that, to start from scratch, to start all over. And so it's still easy for you to take a class when, you know, if you don't have the drive anymore to start from scratch. You don't have the drive, you don't have the time, you don't have the money. It's still easy to take a class. The problem is you do have to have some level of discernment in that you believe the person that teaches you actually has something here, actually knows what to do. And there's an element of risk involved in that because you, there's no guarantee. So it's on you to have the proper discernment. And that means you have to trust yourself. And again, many people don't trust themselves because they've taken classes in the past and they haven't learned stuff. But, you know, you have to trust yourself at some point. Otherwise, all is lost. If you don't trust yourself, then no one else will. And if you don't trust yourself to make a decision about taking a class and spending $2,500, then I don't know how you can trust yourself to take your own trades. I mean, let's be realistic. You're going to burn $2,500 taking stupid trades in the market, but you don't want to spend it for a class. We're going to learn something. You're going to learn something, okay? So, again, this goes back to the same thing. I mean, people got to use their heads. They've got to use their heads. It's about longevity. It's not churn them and burn them. Trust me, I know. I thought I'd make a million dollars right away. When I left New York, I thought it was coming right back in three months. I thought it was coming right, right back. That was ridiculous. And at the time, I didn't realize it. But as it turns out, the time was well spent, and it took a long time, and I got to the other side. You have to believe in yourself to do that. <laughs> Tom's saying, yeah, he doesn't want to be in a ditch right now. I mean, Tom tells me all the time. Tom tells me constantly. And Tom, I don't think is old. I don't think of Tom as old. I think of him as my friend. Tom tells me all the time, I don't want to do, I don't want to do this work anymore. I don't want to do this work anymore. I don't, I don't want to work this hard anymore. I just want to just let my trades work. Tom says it all the time. That's why Tom wants to be in the room. He doesn't want to rate the gaps. He doesn't want to figure out the targets. He, he just wants to relax and take his trades and not have any stress and let his money go to work for him. You know, he doesn't want to get up at 7.30 in the morning every day. Tom's a good example. You know, it's, he doesn't want to do the work anymore. He'd rather just be here. But, you know, I, I don't know. I just went off on another tangent. I don't know what I'm saying. Let's talk about Netflix. <coughs> I, I don't know. Does anyone have any comments about anything I'm saying? It's just, you know, when you're 20, 25, you have, the, you have the drive to do anything. You can take on the world. I mean, do you have any idea how many 20-some-year-olds 20, 20 are living in New York that are ready to take on the world? Some will and some won't. Some will succeed and some will succeed big and some won't. Okay? But as life goes on, you find yourself sometimes you get married. Then you have kids. Now you have a responsibility. <clears throat> now you don't have time to take on the world. You don't have time. You don't have time to take on the world. You have to think about other people. And then you want a different path, and you will go on a different path. It doesn't mean you still can't make your dreams come true, but you may have to actually trust in someone else to help give you that leg up. And that means, you know, finding a mentor or someone to take a class. I, I, you pay me to do the class for the information, and I'm giving you a leg up. I'm saying, here, here, I'm putting my hands together. Put your foot on my hands here. I'm giving you a leg up. Okay, I'm giving you a leg up on the ladder. Where you go from there is up to you. I will give you another leg up if you need it, but I'm not going to carry you on my back. Uh, that's a pretty good example. AEO just broke 90. Don't even tell me that. Are you still in this, Brett? Well, you could have kept the original stop back here at 1308 and still been in it. 
He could have had all these stuffs back here. I was tight with it because of the time of the day. Because of the time of the day here. But you know what? This actually ended up setting up again. I didn't call this second trade. I called the second trade back here. Here, And actually, if you're, if you're still in this trade, you're still in it. It did break 90. Let it go. 85 is the next number. 80 is the next number. Next number is 55.50. This is a nice trade. Look at this. Beautiful. You could, I do think you have to have the stop, though, over 13 now. Anybody that's still on this, it stops over 13. I was tight with this because of the time of the day. And I actually thought the market was going to bounce. Let's look at the market here. Oh, the market is bouncing here. 11 o'clock. Be careful. I mean, this looks like the low here for the Qs, but not the SPY. That's what's so interesting. <clears throat> That's what's so interesting. 182.27, All right. I think I went off on a total tangent there from Lena's question, but it was a good question. And, and I think I answered it well. <laughs> um, does anyone else have any other questions? If not, I'm going to finally here go over the Netflix. It was a good question, though, you know. The funny thing is some people have been trading for years and are like so close. They're so close. They're like right there. They're so close. I, I know, I know, because I know a friend that quit a couple years ago before I figured this stuff out really. He was so close and, and, he, and then he had to quit. He had gone too long without being profitable. He still had his trading account intact, but he actually needed to start actually making real money. And he couldn't keep going on not paying himself. So the, he didn't blow up his account. He has an account intact. But he, here, here's the buy on Netflix. Here's the buy on Netflix. Here's the buy on Netflix. Stop is 386.50. Here's the buy on Netflix right now. Right now if you want it. Right now, over 390. You can buy it right here if you want to or wait till it hits over 390. Whatever you want to do. I think this is it. Stop is 386.50. If you want to buy Netflix, you can wait to buy it at 390.01. I think this is it. I don't think it breaks 87, but I'd give it a 50 cent cushion. You can wait till it gets over 390. I think the time of the day is great for this. Time of the day for this to do this and get over the high by 12 o'clock is a perfect, this is a perfect time of the day. We'll see if it does it. It's got to get over 390 um, and not break 387. Anyways, he was right there. He was right there, and then he had to quit because he needed to start actually making real money. So, and, and he's not come back. He's not come back, even though I've learned how to do this and everything else. He's just not come back. He's gone off and done another career, and he's doing fine. But so many people are so close. They are so, 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 so close. Like, that all they probably would need is my class to actually start making real money. And they don't want to do it because they don't want to take any money out of their trading account. They can't even stomach the idea of spending money for a class at all. It, you know, and because they've been doing it for so many years, but they're, they're like right there. Like they need that one last piece of the puzzle to fit it together. And, and, and they have to spend the money to take my class to learn it. And, the, but they're right there. And if and they're like at the point where they're going to have to quit soon, if they don't start making money. And, and actually, there's actually quite a bit of people that are there, but I'd say probably about 90% of those people end up quitting because they can't push themselves to the next level. All right, let's go over Netflix. Netflix, I called yesterday, I said it's going to gap up. That was a great call for lots and lots of reasons, mainly because of the fact that it would have had to retrace this entire bar here to, to actually lift off to make new highs, and it did. Although the funny thing is it didn't open over the high. The high here was 389.16. The open of the day of the gap was 387.40. So it actually did not open over the high. It would have been cleaner if it had. I'm not saying this isn't working at clean today, but it's really not working at clean. Clean would be major, huge, green, beautiful, monster green. It did not open over it, so it actually didn't uh, trade clean today for the type of the gap, replacement of the gap. That's why it came in before it moved. Um, but again, remember, this is all against the market, and it did set the low of the day in the first five minutes of the day, which was very bullish. Uh, where did this come down to? Let's see if it was anything. Oh, look at that. Seventy-seven fifty. It sat on top of that bar. 
ran up here, made the resistance, came down, gapped, rallied, gapped up, came down to support, sat on top of this bar. 377.70 is the high, 377.49 is the low. Remember, these are areas. It's within 20 cents, and that's what it did. It just came and sat and bounced right off that guy there and held. I mean, this is really the <coughs> least level of resistance it could have or prior support that it could have sat on, and it made a new high. I don't know if this gets over 400 today. I still think it might. I still actually think it might. I think this is the buy setting up in here. As long as this does not break 387 in here, I think this sets up as a buy around between now and 12 o'clock. Over 390 is the 15 minute. It's got within 10 cents of it. I, it's, it's really looking good here. And the time of the day is good here for this to do this and then get over the high. And also with the market bounce. T time of the day is good for this Netflix. I don't know if this is going to do it or not until it gets over 390, but time of the day is good for this. <clears throat> really, really good. So if you have wanted to buy Netflix today, what would you have done? Waited for a proper entry. Waited. Waited for confirmation maybe even because of the pull in this morning. You could have aggressively bought this right here or you could have waited for the confirmation, which you got very quickly, right at the next reversal time between 938 and 940. Here you go. Here you got it. You got it. You got the confirmation at the next reversal time and the next one here and you would have bought it. And actually, you really probably wouldn't have gotten out till here because it, it really rallied really nice. You almost had no retracement here at all. And hit 395. Tom, where did you buy that? Did you buy it pre-market? Did you buy it last night? Did you buy it on the one minute? Where did you buy it? I mean, you know, it's just... Again, I'm not taking trades on my on my preview pre-earnings calls. I'm not doing that. But this closed night before, let's just figure it out. 333 387. That's $53.67 from the open. So if you'd bought it last night and waited until the open to see what it did. You could have taken it off into the open or held it through the rally up because it rallied up almost ten dollars since there. So it was over sixty bucks. Rich had said sixty bucks. It was fifty three from the open from the close of yesterday, and it ran up to the high of ten bucks over it. So it was like six sixty sixty one sixty two that you could have made. Pretty pretty amazing. It's it's almost ridiculous. So you could have taken 100 shares somewhere yesterday. I mean, I, I said it was like going to work yesterday around 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. You could have bought it, and if you bought 100 shares, you would have made over six grand. It's crazy. But you would have had to have the buying power to do it. I mean, here again, you know, having a lot of money helps you be able to trade this and really make money substantially. But even with 100 shares, you would have made over six grand. If you took 200 shares, you would have made over 12 grand. You would have had to have the buying power to do it. You would have had to have the buying power to hold this, to buy it last night and hold it overnight into the gap up. And you're only going to get two to one. So you would have had to have the buying power to do it. But look how it would have paid you. I mean, talk about number of R's. But, you know, you can't do something like that unless you really know how to reprice in charts. This is what we're talking about this morning. I went off on a whole tangent for 20 minutes this morning before I started to decide to tape the room and before half the people were even here about how this was such an amazing call because this didn't necessarily have to do this, okay? It might not have done it at all. Here, let's watch and see. It just broke 387. Hold on. I want to call this again when it sets up. Okay, now you got to wait. You have to wait for the 15 minute. It didn't hit over 390. I know it's going to set up in the 15 minute again. You have to wait for the 15. Anyways, uh, you know, you have to be able to reprice. And the, the thing about this is that this was people taking profits. People bought this gap or bought this stock whenever they bought it. The whole last year it rallied. 
Then this was in October. When the earnings came out, it went up sky high, made new highs, opened at 387, tried to go higher, couldn't do it, couldn't get over 400 then, and fell off the planet that day. I would never have shorted this. I didn't short it. I, there was no reason to do anything here. This is such a bullish stock. It's a monster. It was the beast of the year. I mean, it, it just beat out Google because the stock was in a downtrend and corrected itself. So even though Google's up at 1200 bucks or wherever it's at today, this, this beats everything. It's beat everything in the market last year as far as performance-wise. Just nailed it. And the point is that it did not, wasn't the end of it, okay? Not everybody took all the money out here. Not everybody took the money out here, although quite a few people did. It also got shorted, you can tell from the size of the bar. Came in and held very quickly here. At the least level of support, it, it did. I mean, this could have pulled all the way into here. This could have pulled in all the way into here and still been bullish. It did not do that. It held the teeniest, weeniest, weeniest level of thing. And as soon as it held in here, I said, buy it, buy it. I told Ken to buy it. He did buy it. He bought it. I said, buy it. It's going to retrace and go up, make new highs this year and get up to 400. It almost did. Kind of ran out of time. On around December 23rd, it made it up to 383. And this did almost 100% retrace from this bar. So it had just a huge run up last year. Just amazing. Now, the scap down here could have held. It did, didn't. It wasn't good enough. It did not hold, but it could have. And if the stock had gapped down today, anywhere, anywhere at all, we would have looked to rate it as a short. I, I just didn't think that would happen. I made a great prediction, and I said Netflix is going to gap up and make new highs, and that's exactly what it did. It was an amazing call, and, you know, it worked. And I said even today, don't short it. And even now, I know it's red right now, but it's, it's going to hold. Let's just have the stock trades. I thought it would hold 387, but it's not. Let me see the next level here. 385, 32. Now let's see if this holds. Thomas said you could have bought 10 calls of Netflix for 14,000, controlled 1,000 shares. Very risky. Yeah. Well, again, I don't, I don't do options, but an option trade in this may have played out. I, I don't know. I mean, it would have played out if you would have known what to do. I just don't do options, but you don't need the same buying power then as you do to do the equity. So it's just cheaper. Anyway, so one thing it, oh, you would have made fifty thousand here. I'm gonna plop in what Tom's saying. Tom, I don't know why you didn't do that. <laughs> um. This is new buying that made the gap. That's why the gap is so great. Okay? It was new buying. There's no profit taking in here today because the people that wanted to get out got out here. And then the stock got rebought again. Okay? So there's no profit taking in here. It's new buying that made the gap. Stock gapped up $50 plus and new buying. That's a huge sign of beautiful, beautiful, beautiful strength. And the stock has nowhere to go but up. So I don't know if it gets over 400 today. And I'll tell you, if this closes, like if the market closed right here at 4 o'clock, the stock will blow over 400 tomorrow. If it gets over 400 today, it's still going to blow higher tomorrow. So we'll see what this does. This is nothing but sunny skies ahead. And I wouldn't be surprised if this gap holds for the rest of the year. That would be insane, but I, I wouldn't put it past it because this is such a major, major, major bullish gap today. Such a huge sign of strength. All right, so let's see where this holds. I think it needs to hold within the time period before noon. This obviously is going to make new highs before noon now, and this is coming in. Maybe this will set up on a 15 minute buy setup at noon and then rally up through over the highs at two. see what it does. All right, now I'm going to grab something to drink. I'll be right back. If anybody has any questions, let me know. Netflix was just, you know, wonderful, uh, wonderful bullish gap and is a great bullish gap. And I told no one to short in here today. I said to buy it. And, uh, you know, this is going to hold somewhere. I just don't know where. I thought it would hold 387. It clearly it isn't. It's down at 384.72. So now you got to wait. And the, the numbers will be different now. It's not going to be over 390 to, to buy it. It's going to be a different number. <coughs> Excuse me. 
And you never ever trade a stock you're not familiar with in this price point. I mean, I wouldn't trade anything over $100 that you're not familiar with, let alone over $300. You know. Where did AEO go? Twelve eighty. Did anyone get anything down in there to twelve eighty? Oh, we could have made a little bit more on that. All right, let me grab something to drink. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I just looked outside. Like 75% of the river is flooded. It's like, I don't even know how a ship could get through it. Let's take a picture. It's probably freezing out today. Uh, let's see here with this. All right, somewhere in here this is going to set up again. So does anyone have any questions about anything? If not, I'm going to go over the list of stuff here for tomorrow. Um, I just want to add one more thing to this topic we've been talking about. And here I'll write the information about the upcoming classes in the room. Wealth Manifestation class is Monday from 1 to 4. And the next GAP class is February 8th and 9th. 
as soon as you're willing to let go of your expectation at timing wise of achieving your goals, this is true. This is not just for trading; it's anything. You'll find how much easier you're, or faster you're able to achieve your own goals. When you have time restrictions on yourself, it puts pressure on you that's unnecessary. First of all, you're already working hard to achieve the goal. We all are, whatever our goals are. Many people have different goals. Here, this is this is going to set up soon. As soon as you take the pressure for the time off yourself, it's amazing how, how you end up speeding up the time frame for you achieving your goal. It's like, I don't have any girlfriends right now, actually, that aren't married. Most of my girlfriends years ago that were single, that wanted to be married so badly, had a time element on themselves of when they wanted to be married, when they wanted to have kids and things like that. They were working against themselves by putting pressure on themselves, and it was coming off in their dating and their lack of success in relationships. Uh, for putting restrictions on the time that they had to get commitment and be married and all the things. It's the same thing with training. There's nothing wrong with having high lofty goals and high expectations, but the timing of when you will achieve them may not be exactly what you want. And as soon as you're willing to just focus on what you're supposed to be doing in the moment and doing well, it's amazing how fast you can actually achieve your goals. So once you let go of this idea of things having to be within your time frame, you'll, you'll find that you'll reach the goals much faster. <clears throat> Why this came in a lot. This is going to sit up again here, people. I really would wait to the 15 minute. One, two, three. One, two. So if you're looking at this here, you can see what it did. Like if you're looking at this here, you might think, oh no, it's never going to make a new high today. It's coming too much. It's coming half the retracement now. No, look at the bigger picture here, plus the daily. This is going to hold intact. And this is exactly why you don't short this stock today. Forget this. Pretend you didn't even see that. Would you short that? I would never short that ever any day in my life. Not with my money, not with someone else's money, not with one penny or half a nickel. And that's why you don't go short that stock, and that's why you buy it. So this is probably going to have a huge stop now, though. <clears throat> this is it. This is the pulling. Here, if you want to do it in the five minute, the five minute just triggered. Stop has to be now 382. 382 has to be the stop. It's three and a half dollars if you want to take the trade. Target is 400 bucks. So the stop is 3.5, but the target is $15. It's a five hour trade if it gets to the target. Okay, it's a three and a half hour trade if it gets the high of the day, which is 395. This is aggressive because it's the five minute, but the stop on the five is still worth the risk to reward. And the 15, I have no idea what it's going to be. Safer trade in the 15 with the confirmation, aggressive in the five, but it's a beautiful, beautiful trade, even if it just gets back to the high of the day here. The length of this bar, well, as of right now, it's still going to be with a stop under 382. I just don't know where this is going to trigger over here. <clears throat> Time of the day is great for this to be setting up. Time of the day is great for this to be setting up here in the 15 minute between now and 12 o'clock. Between now and 12 o'clock, this has to set up in the 15 minute. I just have no idea where it is. All right, so let's go over the list of stuff here to see what's tonight. Anyways, think about what I said. As soon as you let go of the timing of things, it's amazing how fast things tend to take shape. Okay, let's look at the list for tonight. Oh my God, it's massive. I don't know if we'll get through the whole thing here. Let's try. Here, I'm telling you people, this is aggressive, but this is the buy. I really, truly believe the time of the day is good for this, everything, everything else. This is very, very, very aggressive, and don't take it if you don't have conviction. Don't take it if you're not okay with the risk. Don't take it if you don't want to trade anymore today, and you did AEO, and it worked out beautiful, and, wow, that was, that was it, 1280. All right, let's quick go through these lists. ALTR, <coughs> and I'll plop it in the room. It's a big list tonight. 
Uh, this is a top watch, AMCC. Tomorrow's the last day of the open house. So come back if you want tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning. And if you're interested in the wealth class with the room for the month, email me or the GAT class, email me. Uh, this is falling a lot today. Kind of thin. CE, this is good. Plenty of volume here. Let's look at it. Okay, that's a watch. CYN, too thin. COBZ, too thin. CPWR, Let's see if there's any big names out tonight here, really. This isn't bad. Nothing so far that I'm crazy about. Coves, too thin. DGII, too thin. Discover. Uh, discover. No, I don't like it. I think this gaps up, but we'll see what it does. But everything's going to be red today, though. Everything is going to be red today because of the market. Everything's red by IBM, which is wackadoo. Uh, this is okay, even though it's thin today. E trades out tonight. Oh, look at E trade today. Go to shorty D trade. Look, everything is down today. <laughs> everything is down. Boy, we're gonna have to be picky poos tomorrow. I'll tell you that. This is okay. FFIN. Too thin. HBHC. Tell you we're gonna watch tomorrow BBY. Uh, this is okay here. HXL. An infi. Uh, this is okay too. Infa. This is okay. Wait, nothing though is like fabulous yet. You know what else we can watch tomorrow? Fio. Uh, this is okay. Maybe this. ISRG. This we can watch. Juniper. Juniper we can watch. Clack. Actually, Juniper is a top watch. Clack is a top watch. Leg. Leg is a top watch. MTAW. Hold on. MATW, sorry. Too thin. MCSS. Oh, Microsoft's out tonight. Well, we do have some big names out tonight. Let's look at Microsoft. I'm sure this is running right today with everything else. Yeah. The, if you held that, well, it got down to 1280, Steve. Yeah, it got down to 1280. I don't think it gets to the 1265 today. It's having too big of a rally. It could set up in a 15 minute and go further. But I actually would be all out of that. Hopefully, you're all out of that. Uh, Microsoft is still a watch here. Yes, Microsoft. Microsoft is actually looking good here for tomorrow. This is fine too. RMD is good. So I think the top watches are Microsoft, Juniper, Flat. Shore is okay. Oh, Starbucks is out tonight. Interesting. Have to see what that does. Uh, this is too thin and wall. Uh, we can put this on the list. 
All right, here's a watch list for tonight. I like E-Train if it does it. I like Microsoft if it does it. I like IGT if it gaps down. Juniper for sure if it does, but I don't know if it does. Clack. And, and I think Starbucks might gap down, but we'll have to see. I really like Microsoft. Some of these things have really had a hard run this morning here with the market today. <gasps> Look at SanDisk. What a mess. Sina. Sohu. Whatever happened to this? No, it was HLF. Hold on. Yeah, see, see, look, this isn't really, this never went climactic. This is, this is a problem for this chart. Never went climactic. Actually didn't break a new low, but if you shorted this here, this held, this resistance. If you shorted this here, you actually made money and held the stop, and it's probably going to break the low. This is, this never went climactic. It doesn't look like it's going to. And actually, it's good for people to want to short it, because otherwise it would get halted. It doesn't look like it's going to. It didn't this morning, and it's trying to situate itself here. This is a short actually. This is going to close probably looking similar to this. Whatever happened to this here today, whatever news came out, somebody said something about, I think it was Jerry, an investigation. It's not good for it. I, I think it closes similar to looking like this. Uh, AEO might set up in a 15 minute, but I actually think it's probably done. It went to really the dream target it could have today, considering everything this has been through. I mean, it might get down to 1265, but I don't see any reason to still be in this trade. Not at all. 1280 was the low. That was the next number, and you really just should be out of it. So market came in today. I said the market was bearish today, and it ended up being bearish. I didn't think we'd have some crazy big day, although we came in pretty hard, fast. That's what happened. We came in hard, fast, and then we kind of rested, 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 tried to break again, couldn't do it. Now we're getting into 12 o'clock major reversal time. That, that, this is, that was either the low of the day in the market, or it's going to make one more drop down. And by the way, if it does, it's going to break it. So it's anybody's guess here now. The market sets up again and gets anywhere near the low, it will break it. There's still room in the SPY to come in. And the Qs look like they're tight, but there's room in the SPY to come in here some more. But you really have to be out of your shorts with profit here before lunch. I mean, that would make sense. And Sand is flipped. See, it is completely flipped. What did this thing do? Did anyone do this? This actually did end up working out. It did rate 20 points. It ended up working out. I just got so involved with the AEO, I never did anything with this. This worked out. This was a nice gap that did have a decent move. It really ended up working out. And this set up quickly, too. And the QSII was a bust because it had no volume and didn't open anywhere near where it was this morning. Look, it actually opened at 1780. Actually opened and reverse swooshed. Actually didn't even gap. And then triggered in a buy setup. And look at it now, it's a mess. Here's Netflix, let's see. Well, this is fun to watch. You know, I'm not in it. Look at the spread now. It was just 50 cents at one point there. Not right now, but it just was. There it was 40. Look at it now. Wow, this has to hold the low of the day here. Does anyone have anything else they want to go over? Anything, anything at all? Everybody should have a good day. Uh, AO was a nice trade. Uh, and the market came in like I thought. The ZHNE even worked. Never called a trade in the QSII. Never set up. Did anybody? Oh, the, the Nokia. Go ahead, Steve. You did the you did the two trades in EO, AEO, right? Because you said you got out of the full one. I thought you said your day was done, but it sounds like you retook it, which is fine. Philip had a good day. Good. Go ahead. Steve can ask a question. Steve H. 
And anyone else that wants to ask any questions here before I let everybody go for the day? This trading room is open for the open house tomorrow, too, if you want to come back, 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. tomorrow, Friday. Big names out tonight. I wasn't sure if there were any, but Juniper, Microsoft, there's some stuff out. And go ahead, see if you can ask a question or anyone else. If you did this Netflix here in the five, you're stopped out. If you did this here in the five minute back here, of course, the stop had to be under 382. It's way under that now, Jim. If you did this Netflix, remember I said it was aggressive to do in the five. Proper trade is to wait for the 15 minute, but you know, the stop was good actually as far as the risk to reward. But actually the risk to reward, if this sets up in the 15, will probably still be there because back up at the high now is just a bigger target. If you did this call here aggressively on the five minute Netflix, you must be out. The stop was under 382. You give a 50 cents cushion. It's well under that. Now you must be out. Netflix isn't stopped, meaning done for the day, if that's what you mean. If you mean is if the trade, the trade here in the five minute, if you did it, you got to be out. If you think this is still done for the day, you mean can you buy this still today? It must hold the low of the day. If Netflix does not hold the low of the day, you can't buy this again today. No. I think it will, though. But you, you can't do anything. Now you must wait. And now let's just see what you would do. If you actually did an aggressive trade in this here, you must wait for the 15 then to get back in it. That means the five minute buy, the next one that sets up, you can't do it. You must wait for the 15 because now you have to wait for confirmation. You have to wait for confirmation that it's going to actually get back up to the high of the day or beyond. So if you did the five and it failed, you can't take the next five, even though the stop's going to be good. You must wait for the 15. Okay, but anybody that did this back here aggressively, you got to be out. I mean, it's $2 past the area here, or $1.50. But it doesn't mean it's done for the day here, no. <coughs> Although it, it will be if it goes under the low. <coughs> Excuse me. Steve's asking a question. Your system does the things you use to rate your stocks. Is it stuff that you can find in filter scans, or is it something that only you look at? Me, personally, it's not that stuff that only I look at. Could you program it into a black box? or something like that, you could try. Have I done that? No. But is it stuff that only I look at? The answer is yes. In the class, I teach you to look at it yourself. If you want to try to program it into a black box, you can. not You can. It's not something you're going to be able to program into any scanner, if that's what you mean. If you want to build a, a, a system like a black box, you know how to do that if you're a tech person. You could try to do that with my system after you take the class. I don't know how to do anything like that. Could you put it in a scanner and get everything? The answer is no. It would be more complex than that. You have to look at it. It really doesn't take that long to do it, actually. I mean, I, I don't think it takes that long. I mean, you're here in the room in the morning. You see me rate the gaps, and then I tell you what they are. It's here. This might be it. Wait for the 15 minute though. 38030. So the stock has to do a 15 minute buy. Don't take the five now. It's trying to hold the low of the day. Time is good at 12 o'clock. I really think this holds. The stop's going to be humongous though. Hold on, let's figure it out. If this goes over 38330, well, no, it's still going to be $3 plus. The stop now is going to have to be under, geez, 379. I put it at 379.75. 379.75. This is a 15 minute buy here. The stop has to be under 379.75. There's a million places that you can find, uh, there's a million places you can find gaps. You can go on free websites and find gaps. It's not hard to find gaps. It's hard to pick which gaps are good. You can go anywhere in the world. You can turn on the television and find stuff that's gapping. You can find gaps, uh, downs and ups all over creation, but it's just filtering them out as far as picking the ones that are good. That's how, why you have to have a way to pick, to pick them. Like this morning, there was more gaps than anyone could find in the world. All your, your platform, which you're paying for if you trade live, has a system here. These are stocks. Here's all the top gainers, the top losers in the NASDAQ. Here's the top gainers and the top losers in the New York Exchange. All you have to do is go through and look at these. These are the top ones for both the exchanges, up and down. And if you're paying for your platform, you have a, uh, you have a little jiggy like that with a list. 
Well, a lot of days, and specifically during earnings season, you do have a lot of gap downs. The only time you don't have a lot of gaps is when it's not earnings season or like a holiday or something like that. There usually is a lot of gaps to look at, and that's why that's the reason I created the system in the first place to narrow it down because it just was too much. But the system itself accounts for the fact that you will immediately look at something after you learn the system and discount it that you will not have to even spend any time on it. I don't sit and rate every stock that gaps down. I don't need to do that. Once you learn the system, you'll know enough to know to say no, 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 no. Yeah, that one looks okay. Yeah, that one looks good. And then you've got a couple on your list. I mean, you would be amazed. The fact is that of, say, there's 2,000 gaps in any day, there's probably like 15, 9, 8, seven, even on a busy day, that are even worthwhile looking at, which is crazy, but it's true. <laughs> it's true. That's why you have to find a way to narrow them down. It's not that time consuming that you think. You saw me do it every day here, yesterday and today. I said, give me a couple minutes, I'll look at these, I'll rate them, and that's the end of the story. And we ended up picking the best ones. How did we do it? Because once you learn what to do, you don't even waste your time rating like 98% of them because they're pointless. Here, this is going to try to hold here. Jeez Louise. I really, 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 really would wait. I'd wait for the 15 minute. I would honestly wait for the 15 minute. Try your best to wait for the 15 minute. Don't do the five here. You want to make sure this is really going to hold. Over 383.30. I think you can hit it. Let's look at the 30 minute. So once you learn the system, you will be able to uh, automatically discount many gaps. And that alone will be a time saver because sometimes in the morning we get up, there's a lot of things and it can be overwhelming. Once you learn the system, it will automatically discount a lot of things because you'll learn what is not even, it's like pointless to even look at a rate. Jeez, <laughs> really? This is, I would wait for the 15 minute. And, and this bar here is going to close in less than four minutes. So you, you really have to wait for this to trigger. And if this bar doesn't close right here, you got to wait for it to get over this bar. Just going to try. If this bar closes here, the hit is over 383.30. If this bar rallies now, you have to wait till it hits over here. But this will close before that would get up there. So let's see what it does. You know, it's, there's, there is so many things you could do in the market on any given day, bullish and bearish. And that's also why I like to narrow down my direction, only doing the bearish stuff. But there's so many given things you could do in the market on any given day. There's like a bazillion trades you could take. Are all of them good? No. Is it realistic to think you'd get them all? Absolutely not. So your only objective is to make money. And in order to do that, you have to find something good that you know is going to work and be focused. And you learn how to trade well, and then you take size in it. And maybe you do two or three things, but you don't do 50. If you're too distracted and you've got too many things to look at, it becomes convoluted. And then end up, guess what you do? You focus on nothing, and you end up taking size in nothing. And take 10 trades with 100 to 300 share lots, 8 fail, 2 work, and you end up down in the day. You're a lot better off just sticking with one thing like I did AEO, seeing the setup, taking the setup, believing it, having conviction, doing the ad, piece milling out, and taking the trade and seeing if it goes to the target and watching the market and maybe looking at one other thing. That gets you more profitable than trying to do everything at once. You can't. You won't. You're, it's impossible. You, you can't. Just try to be focused. And the rating system allows you to do that because it hones you in on, ooh, this is a good one, or ooh, I really like these two, or ooh, I really like this one. And you watch it. If it doesn't work, then you can look at one of the other ones in the list. You have to have a watch list, but, I mean, there's many days that the thing I like that I pick works. And the thing that I like, if it doesn't, then I don't do it. Wait for the 15 minute on this. Wait. I wouldn't put anything past this Netflix today. I wouldn't put anything past this. This is such a beast. It's such a monster. I wouldn't put anything past this. I wouldn't put anything past this for this to base out here at 12 o'clock. Hold. Do a 15 minute buy setup and still blow over $400. I wouldn't put anything past this. <coughs> Because in the end, who's in control? The bulls. 
And when the buying wants to come in, it can come in anywhere it feels like it. Anywhere it feels. All right, any more questions from anyone? If you have any more questions here, email me. Here's my email. Here it goes. Well, we'll see what this does. Those of you that are doing the trends class, I will see you back here at 1 o'clock. Those of you that are going to be in the room tomorrow, I'll see you back here right and early at 8 a.m. Watch Netflix. We'll see how it ends up being here. Maybe I'll do a video on this later today. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Netflix here. Really nice. And uh, it's just, if this doesn't go huge green today, uh, tomorrow, this hits over 400 in the next two days. So we'll see what it does. You're welcome, Candle. Have a good day, everybody. You're welcome, Lee. I'll see everybody back here tomorrow, tomorrow morning, bright and early. Okay, some top picks for tonight. Watch Microsoft tonight if you want. Microsoft could gap down in Juniper. These banks have, have, have not been doing that great. Uh, Juniper could, could end up gapping down. Have a good day, Eric. Good job. All right, I'll see you later in the class. Excellent. Talk to you later. Okie doke. Have a good day.